Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to this liquid crystal healing session. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up, guys? So in this session, uh, we are pulling messages for each and every sign to get some healing messages to you. And for that, I'm using one of my new favorite decks, the Liquid Crystal Oracle by Justin Moikia, Moikia, excuse me, Moikia, 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 Justin Moikia Asar. Okay. This has become one of my favorite new decks. Um, I received it from a viewer, Carolyn. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Um, and immediately when I started working with it, it just felt so powerful. I just felt so connected to all of this. And I knew, immediately I knew that I wanted to do a, a, a session, some readings for the collective with this deck. So what I have done is I have channeled, I have pulled one card for each sign and channeled the messages, the healing messages that Spirit has for that sign coming through that card and the subsequent crystal. Crystal? Crystal. <laughs> so if you like to help further your healing process, if you would like to go out and buy one of these crystals, I highly recommend you do so. It would be great. It would absolutely help you with your healing. Now, in terms of this session, first and foremost, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, okay? So this is not going to resonate for everyone. However, it could... Small bits of it could resonate for you, so just take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Technically, we could be speaking to a cross-watcher. There could be someone out here that are watching these readings on behalf of someone that they know that has a certain placement. So keep in mind that maybe the roles could be reversed, okay? Um, but also, and also, last thing I want you to keep in mind is that this, these absolutely are completely 100% timeless readings, okay, guys? So don't focus it on any certain time frame. If it resonates for you at this moment, then excellent, take it. If it doesn't resonate at, for you at this moment and you feel like you might want to come back to it later, just stick a pin in it, save it to a playlist, bookmark it, whatever, and come back to it at another time where, it, where you feel called to and it may in fact resonate for you at that time. Now, I highly recommend that you guys watch your sun, moon, and rising placements with a specific focus on your rising sign because that tends to be the strongest, most accurate, most important sign for the individual. If you would like to look at this from the uh, point of view of your sun, moon, and rising in your progressed chart, if you have access to that, I would highly recommend that. I would also even recommend looking at it from your natal or your birth chart and looking at it from your progressed chart to see if how those messages interact with each other. That's interesting. I didn't never thought of that. I've never thought of that, holding that intention until I sat down to start describing this to you guys. So excellent. If that resonates for you, go ahead with it, okay? Now, we have each and every sign contained in this video. So in the description box below and in the pinned comment, you will find timestamps. Yay, all right? And so go to your specific sign and do that. The other thing that you actually, the other thing you could do, instead of focusing on the signs, okay, look, go through the list. And if any of the crystals that you find on this, in this session, regardless of sign, if any of the crystals call out to you, then definitely take that message, okay? This doesn't have to be so rigid and so strict that these messages are only for the sign that they come out for, okay? That doesn't have to be that way. So if you want to, and if you don't even want to go through the sign placement, you just want to do it by whatever crystal you see that calls to you, then I highly recommend that you do that. Just follow your intuition here, guys, okay? And as always, if you're new, please make sure to subscribe, okay? Because I would love to, for you to be a part of our group and you'll be able to be notified when more things or more messages are put out. And as always, like, smash that like button because it definitely helps get these messages out to more people. And definitely let me know in the comments section how this resonates for you, which crystal you've picked and what it, how it helped you, how it resonated, or just how you would like to share your feelings, yes? 
Thank you all so, so, so very much for being here. I love you all so very much. I hope these messages resonate well for you. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side, yeah? So at this time, go ahead and check the timestamps and check your reading. Hi, Aries. Welcome to your message. Thank you for tuning in. So let's get into this here. I have the deck with me. So let's see, what message do we have for Aries? What healing message do we have for Aries at this time? What healing message do we have for Aries? Whoops, okay. We're gonna take this one. There's a bunch of cards came out, but this one has caught my attention. And so we're gonna go with it. You do have Jade and this says dream work, okay? So initially, first thing that I'm picking up on is the beautiful green energy of this card, okay? And that's taking me to your heart chakra. Um, and what I'm feeling here from this, Aries, is um, yes, this dream work can represent, you know, working with, uh, working with energies within the dream space. Um, but actually... And we're, we're going to read, we're going to read from the book. I'm going to get a little bit of, uh, of, of a definition from the book here for you. But what I'm getting, what I'm picking up on here, Aries, is that there are certain dreams that are within your heart, okay? Because remember, with all of this green energy or this green color here, Aries, I'm picking up on heart chakra activity for you, okay? Or just heart space. And what I'm feeling here, Aries, is that there are some dreams within your heart there are some desires within your heart that I feel like you haven't been allowing yourself to express, to even think about, let alone express. Um, and that is affecting your relationship with and the reality of your inner child, which in my own personal healing journey, I've come to the understanding, a very strong understanding that most of the blockages I experienced in life and a lot of the pain and the turmoil that I've consistently experienced in life is directly related to the traumatization and the damage um, and that my inner child kind of uh, acquired in life, okay? And, and I'm not trying to say that I'm anything unique. We all have... Well, Societally speaking, we are all kind of trained and programmed to um, disconnect from our inner child, even devalue the essence of the inner child, whether you whether you know you consciously think of it that way or not. Um, you know, there's a lot. I'm picking up on there's a lot of of um, hidden ways that we are trained to devalue or trained to conditioned to devalue or uh, let go of or reject the inner child. But your inner child is basically your inner spirit, okay? It's, it's the part of you that um, is, is directly connected to source, God, source, creator, and spirit, okay? Um, and so what I'm getting here for you, Aries, is that there... It's time for you to allow yourself to dream. It's time for you to allow yourself to settle into your heart chakra and feel, really feel what it is that's in there. And, and, and for some of you here, some of you may actually be doing some heart chakra healing work right now. Okay, you're in the middle of it, you're in the process of it. And what's actually going to help you, whether you're doing this work or not at the moment, so that you know what is going to help you heal help heal the damage is allowing yourself to dream of the good things allowing yourself to dream of what it is you truly want now i am also picking up that for some of you here it's hard for you to dream about what it is that you want because of the blockages that you face um the lack of belief in yourself the lack of feeling worthy uh, I, i'm just picking up on that for some of you the action of actually sinking into your heart chakra and allowing yourself to dream of what it is you truly desire and want is actually a really painful thing for you or actually is very difficult for you or consciously, maybe I'm picking up that consciously, you, before you even approach that, your, logic, your logical mind or your ego mind steps in 
with all the obstacles, all the burdens, all the conditioning from the past that says to you, this is, this is a waste of time, why even try? But I will say that the more you allow yourself to do that, um, it's very much a practice makes perfect type of situation. So the more you really allow yourself to sink into that time or that, that space and to work on clearing those blockages and healing that and work on, um, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to find the card in the book as I'm writing, uh, as I'm speaking, uh, work on allowing yourself to dream allowing yourself to heal and allowing yourself to feel, the better at it you will get. The less and less your ego mind will have control over you and the more you'll be able to move past that blockage, okay? So let's read from the book here for what this card says and then we'll get into some tarot for you. So your healing journey today. If Jade has come to you today, it's time to take notice of your dreams. This can be relevant on two levels. The first relating directly to the dream state that occurs when you sleep, and the second to your goals and ambitions in life. Whichever it is for you, the message is the same. Listen, assess, and then act accordingly to embrace the necessary changes. Both the above levels of the word dream interact often given ri giving rise to each other. I'm sorry, let me say that again. Both the above levels of the word dream interact, often giving rise to each other. This little fact is often overlooked. Write down all that occurs while you sleep, as you may just be creating your future. Jade only comes into life when we need to know that anything is possible, and we are truly limitless in our ability to manifest. Now is the time to live your dream into realization, whatever it is. Take steps so the rest of us can see it. This is the most sacred stone of Ascended Master Serapis Bay. He may be calling to you. So if that, if that intrigues you, if the mentioning of Ascended Master Serapis Bay intrigues you, then do some research, okay? I feel like somebody here heard that name and felt a pain or something. Follow that, okay? Then that really truly is Ascended Master Seraphis Bay calling to you, wishing to work with you, asking you to recognize that he is there and willing to help you, okay? That your call is being answered. But it's your conditioning, okay? What I'm picking up on, it's the same thing that I was picking up on um, in terms of not allowing yourself to dream or not allowing yourself to sink into what it is that you're dreaming or allow yourself to experience what it is you dream of. The same thing is blocking Serapis Bay or anyone else, any of the other ascended masters and angels and guides and whatnot to come through for you. It's your lack of belief. Your heart chakra is very closed off, okay, at this time. And so what is necessary for your healing process at this time is to work on opening your heart chakra and healing your heart chakra and allowing yourself to dream. And again, if hearing the name Ascended Master of Serapis Bay hits you in any sort of way, then there is a message there for you. Um, he is trying to work with you, do some research, read up on him and his energies and what it is he represents and how it is he could be coming forward to help you heal and then connect, consciously allow yourself to connect with that, yeah? All right, Aries, let's get some tarot for you here. So what is Jade for Aries? What messages do we have for Jade, for Aries? in terms of the healing potential that Jade has to bring for you. All right, that's enough right there. So you do have the, you do have the 10 of pentacles. All right, Aries. So um, the 10 of pentacles here is representing a long, slow, maybe arduous process, okay? But um, it, it, it's, it's a long-term goal or it can represent having come a long way. Also, the Ten of Pentacles can represent, in me, in my opinion, as a reader, the Ten of Pentacles represents, can at least represent the completion of a lesson, the completion of a life circumstance. I often like to say that the Ten of Pentacles is that moment where you get through a training course or a, a course of study, and now you're graduating from that, okay? You're ready to leave that energy or that space or that time and move on to the next phase in your life, taking with you everything that it is you learned in that process, okay? And then graduating to the next step. So uh, 
the healing, what, what I'm getting specifically, expressly for this Ten of Pentacles for you at the bottom of the deck, Aries, is that this time period is coming to a close. This time period of being closed off in your heart, not able to dream, not able to focus on your dreams, not allowing yourself to accept your dreams and move towards them, that time is coming to a close because the, the necessary, what it, what it was that you were, that you needed to learn okay, during that time is now finished for you, all right? Definitely, 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 definitely. Okay, let me let me see what these cards are. Um, you have a number of cards that have fallen out here. Uh, two of them have fallen face up. The rest have fallen face down. There are four more. The two cards that have fallen face up for you, Aries, are, eight, are the Ace of Cups and the Hanged Man, okay? So in this... In this situation, Aries, what I really want to say for you, taste it, what I really, really, really want you to take from this message, if nothing else, I want you to take the fact that this time period of feeling stuck or stagnant is over. Ten of Pentacles, okay? Ten of Pentacles and the Hanged Man. The Hanged Man represents feeling stuck or feeling stagnant or being in a place that you can't move from. But ultimately... That stuckness or that stagnancy helps you to see eventually over time, helps you to gain a different perspective. And right now, at the core of what this feels like for you, Aries, this perspective is this perspective that brings you a sense of love, self-love, Ace of Cups. It literally has taught you, just to boil it down, for, to simplify it, it literally has taught you either how to love yourself or that you need to love yourself. And is putting you in a position to do that, okay? Is setting you up to love yourself more, all right? Let's look at what has fallen face down for you. Yep. Okay, so this time period is definitely coming to a close here. You have the world, okay? This is a beautiful thing. Now, with this, Aries, you have the Three of Swords, the Seven of Cups, and the Five of Wands. So there has been a time period, Aries, where you suffered some damage, okay? I mean, this is a healing message, so okay, that makes sense. But there was a time period, Aries, where you suffered damages, Three of Swords, and that left you in a little bit of, of, a, of a confused state, Seven of Cups, not knowing who to trust, not knowing how to feel, not knowing which way to go. And what I'm getting here is that caused you to focus outward. That caused you to focus on other people, other people's opinions, or how other people did things, okay? That's where the Five of Wands comes in. Um, and there was chaos, there was confusion, there were, offer, there, were, uh, there were often differing opinions or differing sources of information that really only confused you even more. And maybe, in some cases, really only helped to reinforce the damage that you experienced because in, because what ultimately, Aries, what is needed now, and I think this is the realization that you've come to, which is allowing you to close out this lesson or this experience of lesson here, what you, what ultimately the message here has been that instead of focusing outward and instead of asking other people or focusing on other people's opinions or their process of healing, you need to go within. And I feel like that's the realization that you're coming to here at this time, Aries. The hanged man, you're stuck, you're stagnant, and you'll probably be under the influence of many other individuals, right? Instead, you need to be under the influence of yourself, Ace of Cups. So this time period is coming to a close, Aries. And what it is that you need to do at this time is focus more on your dreams, focus more on your inner reality, okay? Loving yourself to bring forward what is next on your journey, all right? There you go, Aries. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm sending you so much love and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your healing message. Let's see what we've got for you, yeah? So I've got the deck here. Let's see. What message do we... Woo, woo, woo. Wait, okay, hold on. Let's start it. Let's try that again because that was a lot of cards. Okay, what healing message do we have for Taurus at this time, please, Spirit? What message, what healing message do you have for Taurus at this time, please? For my Taurans. For my Taurans here. 
Okay, we're going to take this one, Taurus. We have Azurite. Focus. Okay. So, um, focus is necessary. Focus is needed at this time, Taurus. Um, but see, here's the thing, Taurus. I feel like you are in the process of creating something. You're in the process of building, start something new, starting a new creative venture, starting a new creative process. And this is really excellent. First and foremost, I want to say that everything within me, okay, is encouraging you to continue down this road or continue in this process. This feels very creative. This is your, your, I don't know what this is. It doesn't have to be like, you know, an art project or something like that, like something creative like that. It feels like you're in a creative space. You're in a creative time period. You're in a creative zone. All right. Because you're bringing, you're, you're developing something. You're bringing something new. I'm very excited about this for you. I really want to encourage you to continue. Okay. But your focus is what's really important here. All right. Not necessarily that you're losing your focus. I mean, for some of you, okay, that could be, that could be the message for you right now. Um, you have something you want to create. You're inspired by something. Um, I am feeling a little bit of discouragement for someone here, uh, but you're just needing to focus. Okay. You're just needing to focus on the feeling of this situation and what it is you want to create here to allow it the, to allow the inspiration and the energies to come together, okay, to come towards you. For uh, now, the, another thing that's coming through with this focus card, Taurus, um, is uh, oops. well, that just escaped me. <laughs> okay, but focus is a uh, focus is the point for you right now. Needing to hold your focus, needing ah, there it is, it came back. Needing to fine tune your focus, okay. And, the, uh, and the, the, the advice that I have for you in terms of this, Taurus, is allow yourself to be creative. Allow the energies to just flow through you. Okay, some of you are having trouble with this focus, but you're being too rigid. Don't expect anything, okay? The only thing really, I guess, that you could have an expectation towards is to, at some point down the road, eventually reach your destination, all right? And yes, your destination may have a certain amount of definement right now, but don't hold so firmly to your attachment of what that is supposed to be or how it is supposed to work out. Right now, you're in the creative process. So being too rigid, being rigid at all, Taurus, is only going to derail you, is only going to hinder the process, is only going to make it more difficult for you to reach your end goal eventually, all right? So right now, in your focus, allow the energies to flow, okay? Don't put any definition, don't put any sort of walls or container around it other than keeping it within the realm of what it is you're trying to create. Outside of that or other than that, allow allow the energies to flow. Allow every allow the energies to just move in whatever way in whatever direction they move naturally. Whatever flow, however they want to flow, allow it to happen. I recommend for you during this time, Taurus, to keep a notepad close to you, or maybe, you know, keep, uh, put like your note app on your phone in a place where it's easy to access so that you can write down and keep track of the things that come up, okay, during this creative time, during your creative process, all right? But your focus, oh, I'm sorry, before I go into the tarot, your focus is very important here, Taurus. And for some of you, yes, the message is that you need to practice focusing a little bit more but that's not the heaviest part of it the bet the, the the strong oh, where am i going the strongest part of it taurus is the fact that you are in a creative time right now and your focus needs to be prioritized is what i'm hearing okay um so whatever it is that you may need to do to remain in an energetic space where you can focus as good as well as possible, maintain that focus. Your focus needs to be your priority right now, okay, because of your um, creative process. So let's read from the book. If Azurite has come to you today, it usually means that something is trapped in the subconscious level of self that is being denied its path of realization and or healing. 
Azurite simply indicates the need to unite the mental self into action with focused purpose, something often easier said than done. The basis of this energy is truth with self, which will activate the wisdom, focus, self-love, and other pathways of action to get the job done. Scatter is about to be a thing of the past. Think before acting, or so we are taught, a wisdom that is great if understood to be meant the whole mind and discovery of your united mental directive. But that is not what we generally do. Azurite has rushed to your side to open you mentally to your infinite possibilities. He knows the spirit can be given a moment to breathe. I'm sorry, he knows if the spirit can be given a moment to breathe, it will deliver your sacred path into the world. Expect greatness from yourself, and so it will be, but focus on one thing physically. It opens infinite doors for the spirit to work its magic. No focus and no one gains. Your choice. I choose truth, and it never lets me down. Let it be your guide. With Azurite as your guide, you are being offered the chance to do something very special. When the inspiration comes, take fearless action. And Taurus, that's why I really feel like it would be super beneficial for you right now to keep a notepad or a journal or to keep your note uh, app on your phone or something easily accessible at this time. Because in your focus, okay, you will be able to gain the insights that you need in moving forward. Now, your healing process, this healing process that I feel for you at this time, Taurus, could absolutely, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the creative process that I'm feeling for you right now, Taurus, could absolutely be for the, facilitation, the facilitation of some sort of healing, okay? Allow, do whatever it is you need to do at this time, Taurus, to allow your sense of focus to flourish, yeah? Let's get some tarot here. What tarot cards or what tarot messages do we have for Taurus at this time? That's enough. Okay. Ah, all right. You do have temperance here, Taurus, at the bottom of the deck. So first and foremost, Taurus, this... Uh, okay, so this is why your focus is needed so much right now. Because yes, there is a healing process that's happening. There's also a realchemization process that's going on here with the, with the uh, with temperance, and then underneath temperance is the page of wands to the ace of wands. Okay, the page of wands uh, is a messenger. Also, for me though, the page of wands can represent a moment where you are re aligning or re-identifying yourself the page of wands can represent a midlife crisis or what we understand we have come to understand is a midlife crisis um, but also the page of wands can just represent if it's not a midlife crisis it just represents or it can represent changing the way you identify changing the way you show up in the world changing your alignment, changing what it is that you go after, changing what it is you want to pursue, whatnot, whatever. The Page of Wands can also represent a new creative process or a new creative project. But there is a level of realchemization that's happening here for you, Taurus, with, te with temperance. And that is why this focus is needed so much. Like, let's say you were in a lab right now and you were working on with some, or you were working on taking two comp uh, comp um, compounds and fusing them together, alchemizing them together to create something new. Well, you couldn't do that haphazardly. You would need to focus. You would need to focus on your project. You would need to focus on what's in front of you to make sure that it's done correctly, but also that it's done well, okay? So let's talk about, let's talk about what's come out here for you for the rest of the tarot cards. You have two, you have two, you have two cards that have come out face up, okay? And those are, I'm sorry, yes, face up, but they are reversed. It's the Five of Swords, and the Knight of Pentacles. Now, to be honest with you, Taurus, this feels like a good thing. First of all, the fact that we have the Five of Swords in reverse is a good thing here. Because to me, this is saying, especially coupled with the Knight of Pentacles, to me, this is saying that you're no longer... You're no longer fighting for something. You're giving up some sort of fight. You're getting up, giving up some sort of movement towards something you're 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 stopping some sort of momentum what i'm getting here from this taurus is that you're no longer willing 
to continue to pursue a certain direction that you may have been in the past, okay, with the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. And I'm feeling like the reason why you are no longer willing to continue or you are, I, I guess I want to say rejecting a certain path or rejecting a certain thing that you've been working towards or just no longer wanting to be associated with it any longer, no longer wanting to, no longer wanting to move forward with it. Somehow, something about it became toxic or destructive, combative, was lose-lose. There was something sabotage maybe, to it. Uh, but see, here's the thing, Taurus. I feel like it never really was a beneficial situation to begin with. And with this Knight of Pentacles energy in reverse, I feel like in the past, you may have been very diligent. You may have been very committed. You may have been um, all about, let's take this one step at a time. Let's move this flow forward slowly but surely. Eventually, we'll get where we're trying to go. Eventually, we'll reach the end result. Eventually, things will become better. But I don't think that was the actual... Maybe it started out well with good intentions, but ultimately, it divulged into this situation that was just toxic and harmful. OK, and so this is that energy that is causing you to change, that's causing you to focus on something new, that's causing you to want to move in a different direction. OK, Taurus. And so your focus here is all about how, where you want to go next, what it is you're trying to work towards next. OK. Lordy, Taurus, you have a lot of um, reversed energies here. However, what is in reverse for you, Taurus, are things that you are letting go, and this is a good thing. So the next three cards that you have that were face down, you have the Three of Cups in reverse, you have the Ten of Wands in reverse, and then you have that with the Two of Pentacles upright. I really like the fact that the Two of Pentacles is upright here, because what this is saying to me is there is something on a collective scale or something involving a group of people um, interpersonal relationships somehow, potentially, that uh, some sort of hive mind mentality, something something that maybe once worked on a collective scale or in terms of a bunch of other people, but that no longer works now. It became burdensome for you. And so there, there is a release of that, okay? Three of Cups and the Ten of Wands. There is a release of that burden. And right now, this is a time period of, for you, Taurus, to bring balance into your situation, physical balance into your situation. And what I'm feeling like here, Taurus, is that um, this is a time right now where you are, rekind what I just heard is rekindling your sense of self. So I feel like you have just recently decided to reject or let go of some sort of hive mind situation, some sort of uh, collective situation, um, something associated with a group of people, you've just now chosen to reject that or to leave that behind or to let that go. And right now is a time for you to kind of get back into yourself, get back into a sense of centeredness and groundedness, okay? And, and focus on where it is you want to move forward from here. So really, Taurus, this, this current moment at this time, most likely when you're hearing this reading, you are in the beginning stages of developing something new. But there is a need for you to focus right now so that you can bring balance into your life, so that you can move forward with a new creative project or a new inspired action in the future, okay? All right, Taurus. I'm going to leave it there. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very soon. Yes. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> hey, Gemini. Welcome to this liquid crystal healing session. Thank you so much for tuning in. So let's get into this here and see what message we have for you. What crystal, liquid crystal healing message do we have for my Geminis at this time? For Gemini's, please, Spirit, what crystal healing message do you have for Gemini at this time? For my Gemini's, what message do you have for Gemini? This one. 
<laughs> oh, cool. I really like this card, Gemini. This card has been coming out for me lately, um, and it's Zircon. Life changes. Okay. Did I say that correctly? Yes, Zircon. Um, this is a really beautiful card. If you are seeing spiders lately, um, then this is a message. Uh, the, the, then that is kind of confirmation. Okay. Uh, Zircon represents the advent of new life circumstances to come in or the advent of life changes. Sometimes these can, these can be big, sometimes these can be small. I'm kind of giving it, getting an energy of like a tower moment, um, you know, but not because anything really necessarily needs to be destroyed. Of, of course, you know, this is a general reading. So like this could, I mean, maybe you are having experiencing a tower moment, but what I'm getting with the energies of the tower moment is just the element of change that it brings forward, okay? And again, sometimes these changes can be extreme. Sometimes these changes can be fairly subtle. Either way, they always have a strong impact in your life. And if you are seeing spiders lately, then this, if you have been seeing spiders lately, then this is um, confirmation to you because the animal re that is represented with this card are spiders. And like I said, this card has actually been coming out, came out for me um, a few days ago. And ever since it came out, I've been seeing spiders. I've been aware of the spiders, but like yesterday, I actually had a really synchronistic event where I was just in my room, um, sitting on my bed, kind of hanging out and just chilling out and just relaxing and going with the flow. And all of a sudden this spider, I felt something crawl on me and there was a spider crawling on my arm, completely harmless. Um, but that to me was a big, big sign because not only did I just see a spider like around, but it actually like crawled up. It was on my bed, of course, but it crawled up and crawled on my arm and caught my attention that way. Okay. So Gemini, you, oh, interesting. I just wanted to say Virgo. I don't know if you have Virgo in your chart or maybe you are associated with a Virgo. You might want to watch the Virgo situation, the Virgo message, but you are, I want to say you are at the precipice of some major big life changes. Like I'm saying, I'm definitely, like I said, I definitely feel uh, I'm picking up on a tower moment type of energy. We're gonna get into the tarot in a few moments, so we'll see if it comes out there. Um, but I do wanna read uh, the healing message from the book here for this card. Okay, here we go. If Zircon has come to you today, change is at your doorstep. The changes that are usually presented by Zircon are ones that have been long awaited. They are always life-altering experiences from which one grows both inwardly and outwardly in the world. The most exciting thing about Zircon, presenting for most people, is that it usually represents the last part of change, the part after the pain, tears, and attachments have been realized meaning real change and now. Zircon is also a great communication stone and will bring focus, determination, and forgiveness to the party. Through this, it lets us see that change is not just about cutting away. It is about formation, realization, and growth. One thing is for sure, with Zircon present, things are about to be very different. Zircon's life changes always permeate all levels of self. They are holistic, which means you won't see them if you look at single parts. They hide in the open expanse of the whole, the last place a mind would look for them, and that is Zircon's real gift. Enjoy your new world and keep your eyes open for spiders, Zircon's corresponding animal totem. They often come as validation. This is a contact stone for the Ascended Master Sananda. He may be calling you. Sit and listen. Beautiful. Beautiful, Gemini. Okay, so let's get into some tarot here. What tarot messages do we have? Many of the three shuffles, Gemini. So what other messages do we have for Gemini in terms of these life changes that they are experiencing? One more shuffle for you, Gemini. All right. Here we go. So what messages do we have for Gemini 
in terms of these life changes that they are experiencing, are coming into, are going to be experiencing. What messages do we have for Gemini? Okay, Gemini. So, excellent. All right, cool. At the bottom of the deck, of, <laughs> at the bottom of the deck, you have the page of wands. So that definitely represents the change, okay? A new life experience I did just here. A new way of identifying yourself, a new way of showing up in the world. Um, I feel like for some of you with this page of wands energy, you're taking an active role in this change. For some of you, this change could just be um, you going with the flow and allowing it to happen and it just happening, happening naturally. But for others of you, I'm definitely feeling this energy of you are taking an active, <clears throat> excuse me, you are taking an active role in this change. You are consciously manifesting this change for yourself, okay? Now, this could very well be because some of you find yourself in a dark night of the soul energy. You do have the moon here, okay? And what I'm picking up for some of you, Gemini, is that if you are taking an active role in this change, it's because you find yourself in some sort of rock bottom, at some sort of rock bottom somehow, or at a really dark place in your life. But what I'm getting here, Gemini, is that regardless as to why you may find yourself in this dark place, you're realizing that you need to take an active role if you're going to change your reality, okay? And that is an excellent, excellent point of view. That is an excellent place to be, okay? I really, really like that. Uh, and it's definitely necessary, I'm hearing from Spirit. Now, for others of you, the moon represents a time period in this change in your life that you're going through that is, um, I don't want to say shady, it's just that things are not as they seem right now. Uh, I feel like you're at an in-between time where time is an illusion, I'm hearing nothing really makes sense right now, um, you can't really see too clearly, your vision may be hazy or your perception may be a little skewed or a little off, don't worry so much about that because uh, this is not a bad thing. It just feels like this is a necessary part of the process, first of all. And it just feels like you're moving through a super malleable time energetically where things are often changing and switching and the and everything is in constant flow and constant flux. And so the, 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 the strongest message that I'm getting from the moon here for you Gemini is that don't focus too much on anything right now because nothing is as it seems, okay? It may feel like you can't really nail anything solid or or nail anything down that is solid or or um I guess solid is the best word for it figuratively and physically. Um but that's okay. It's not a bad thing. Okay, you're just moving through a necessary part of the process. Just allow the energies to flow and keep in mind, okay? Keep strongly in the forefront of your mind that things are not as they seem right now so really don't allow yourself to get attached to anything just let things move naturally don't try to force anything don't try to block anything don't try to hold anything back or or anything like that don't try to define anything right now just keep it pushing like just keep allowing yourself to move through the energy you will exit this this period of the process in due time, okay? You have three more cards here that have fallen face down. This is beautiful. Oh, this is wonderful, Gemini. Look at this. You have the Fool, the Four of Wands, and the King of Wands, okay? S stay confident in yourself, Gemini, all right? Like, d don't, and, and, and definitely don't allow, <laughs> I guess we can say the shadiness of the energy, of the surrounding energies for you right now, do not allow that to sway you off your path, okay? The King of Wands, I love that the King of Wands is here for you because this feels like it's giving you, it's it's either providing you with, he's providing you with, or you are embodying the principles of the King of Wands, which are energies of extreme self-confidence, not allowing anyone or anything to tell you that they cannot or they will not, okay? Um, and also, very, very, uh, uh, the very, um, a very import, important <clears throat> or poignant element to his energy, this King of Wands, is the fact that he, stay, he keeps his eye on the prize. He is focused. He's got like laser 
laser pinpoint focus accuracy and he can hold that like a mother, right? Um, and the other thing about the King of Wands with that focus is that he sits back and allows himself to wait for the right moment to strike, for when the window or doorway of opportunity to open for him to go after what he wants, to take action towards what he wants. And right now, Gemini, it feels like you really need to remain in this energy right now of waiting for the right time to strike. Because again, there are life changes happening. There are a lot of changes that are happening for you right now, Gemini. And it's just, you're in a, at a like I said, you're at a very malleable point in the process where things are starting to take shape. Things are moving around, things are flowing, and things are not as they seem. You haven't reached the end result yet, so don't try and nail anything thing down. Don't try and don't try to define anything right now. Okay, just allow it to flow and wait for that moment to take your next step to make your next move. I do feel like Gemini, you have already taken a leap of faith in a new direction, and that is beautiful. Okay, and you have a really good, solid foundation within yourself to make your dreams a reality or to really move through these life changes in a really effective way, okay? So really all you need to do right now is remain confident, remain focused on what it is that you want, and allow the energies to move about as they will, okay? Excellent. I love this for you, Gemini. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Take care. Bye. <laughs> hey Cancer, welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you so much for tuning in. So let's get in straight into this. Yeah, I got the deck here. So what messages do we have for Cancer at this time? What crystal healing message do we have for Cancer, please, Spirit, at this moment in time? For my Cancers, what message do we have for Cancer at this time? Spirit, there we go. Thank you very much. Okay, Cancer. Um, trigger warning. I love you. <laughs> but <laughs> what you have here, Cancer, is Labradorite. And that brings you a message of free will. And what I'm getting with this specifically, Cancer, is that um, this is very much surrounding your energies or your alignment with other people okay there is something about free will here that you are learning a lesson of and the very first thing that i'm picking up on cancer is that you are learning uh, you're coming to a place where you're starting to recognize that you do have free will um maybe there this could be an energy of you realizing or recognizing that your free will you've been allowing your free will or your right to free will to be sacrificed by the will, the desires of other people. Um, this could be a period, a time period in your life where you're learning the very hard, very hard, but valuable lesson in setting healthy boundaries between you and other people, you and another person, okay? I just get this feeling, Cancer, that you are, or for whomever this message is for, you have this Desire to help people, yes, and the desire to be there for people, but there's some sort of manipulation that's happening or has happened in your life in the past, Cancer, that has caused you to keep from enacting your free will, okay? But then there's a sense of everyone else's free will seems to have some sort of priority over you, over yours, and that's not fair. But Cancer, this is a, I'm, what I feel here for you is that this is not an easy thing for you to accept. This is not an easy mess, a lesson for you to learn. This is not an easy message for you to hear. And the harder it is for you to accept this lesson in your life right now, the more entrenched you are in this focus on others rather than a focus on self. Okay? So the more resistance you're feeling towards that, the more fight you naturally give or your ego gives towards that, 
the stronger or the more you actually need this healing, okay? Um, there was something else that I wanted to say, but that seems to, has, ha, seems to have escaped me. So let's get into the book. Maybe it'll come back. But let's read what this has to say for you in the book. And then we'll get into some further definition with the tarot. Here we go. Labradorite. Free will. Okay. Here we go. The arrival of Labradorite for you today signals the empowerment of free will, an exciting time of change and creation. But before she can do her work, the mind must be refined and brought into unity. Labradorite is letting us know its action must be refined. I'm sorry. Labradorite is letting us know its action time. So refine your focus, meditate, and be sure you feel what your heart and soul need in order to go forward towards life purpose. Prepare to create with love and free from fear and under the guidance of spirit for the betterment of all. Labradorite also lets us know that it is time to spiritualize our surroundings and understand the purpose behind all that is in our life, even physically. All creation holds purpose. Be ready to know what it is. In your new embrace, there are no secrets, only truth. Now, the... Okay, I'm feeling called to... to, to um, point this out. The animal totem for Labradorite is a coyote. And I get this feeling of like a lone wolf type situation. I don't think, I don't think coyotes travel in a pack. I feel like, uh, and I may be wrong, uh, please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I get this feeling from coyote that they are very, they're very, they're very much individuals. I feel like they, they are like lone animals like they don't they don't travel in packs maybe as much as wolves do um and there's a level and there's an, a a message of independence there okay independent thought free thinker being able to feel to being able to come to your own options your own conclusions think for yourself very much a nine of pentacles energy i wonder if that's going to come out in the tarot for you here but Cancer, as I was reading through Labradorite, something hit me, okay? And what hit me was that some of you are actually having to put boundaries in place between you and other people in your life. And that is a very, very, it's an, it's an extremely difficult thing for you to accept. Because putting those boundaries that are very much necessary um, and healing yourself in terms of that is going to cause an uproar, is going to cause an upheaval, is probably going to cause a great deal of pain for someone else. But cancer, that pain that it may cause for someone else, number one, is not your fault. And number two, is not really your responsibility. Whatever it is that happens, okay, however it causes someone to feel, by you placing healthy boundaries in your life is something that's necessary for the development of that individual, okay? There is a level of understanding that no matter, if, if you are coming from a place of truth, personal truth, self-love, authenticity, and with a desire to heal your own self so that you are a whole and more complete individual so that you are able to be there for service in a better way for others, whatever it is that you may need to do to protect yourself or to heal will probably trigger something in somebody else. But it is not, but you are not directly to blame for that cancer. And I feel like this is where the big discrepancy comes into play. It's like you're allowing yourself to take responsibility for the pain and the fear of others, but that's not yours to take. And if you have people around you that are manipulating you into getting you to believe that you being in a healthy place, you placing healthy boundaries hurts them and creates trouble for them, 
Number one, that is a situation you need to remove yourself from. But number two, the other thing that needs to be understood here, Cancer, is that they, those individuals have to experience that for their own life, for their own lives, for their own development, whether it be spiritual or just de character development, okay? That's not something you can really, number one, you can hold against yourself. It's not something that should be held against you. And it's not your responsibility to take that on for them. They're just deflecting because they are not accepting the truth of their reality and instead are dumping on you and causing you to feel like it's your responsibility. You have to take ownership of it when really it's theirs to take ownership of. Okay, last shuffle for you, Cancer. And then let's see what tarot messages we have for you in terms of this. Yes. So what messages do we have for, tar for, for cancer in terms of Labradorite and the healing towards free will that Labradorite is bringing for cancer right now? Yeah. See, cancer, this is exactly what I was thinking. All right. Um, at the bottom. Oof. Okay. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Knight of Swords. That's a fairly aggressive energy. Unfortunately, Cancer, I do feel like this is the energy that is coming at you, that is being directed towards you, that either is being directed towards you or has been directed towards you in the past. So you're hype, or maybe you're hyper aware of that at the moment, that type of energy. But let me let me explain this and then we'll get back to that. You have four cards. Three of them have fallen face up. You have the Ace of Wands, you have Death, and you have the Nine of Swords. All right. So... Now, this can either be read as the Ace of Wands to death or death to the Ace of Wands. What does that mean, Eric? Well, the Ace of Wands to death, to me, could say that you are inspired. You have some form of inspiration or some sort of wanting to go in a new creative direction that is causing a transformation in your life, okay? Or it could be the other way around you are going through a transformation in your life and that is causing you to feel inspired to move differently, to communicate differently, to do something differently, to do something new or something different. But there is fear and anxiety surrounding that, the nine of swords. And I definitely feel like the nine of swords is on both sides of the equation. Now it's definitely on the other side of the equation or whomever is opposing you right now in the form of the knight of swords. Because whether you have clearly communicated this desire to change or you are ex fully expressing this change, um, whether, you're, whether, you are, whether you're just expressing it because it's a natural change, it's the energy, okay, you've gone through some sort of transformation and now you're moving or acting differently or you're aligned differently or you're communicating the fact that you want to go through some sort of change, either or, whichever it is for you, there are people on the outside looking in that are not happy about it. Nine of Swords, and they will fight you to get you to stay where you are and to not leave them behind. Nine of Swords, Knight of Swords. But here's the thing, Cancer. I don't fully believe like you would actually really be leaving anyone behind. I feel like this change here, this transformation that's happening for you, Cancer, is a realization or an understanding or a deeper understanding of the element of free will. Everybody has free will. So the transformation that you're going through, Cancer, could very well be understanding that everybody has free will and you can't change anything for anybody. Now, the Nine of Swords would be representing your energy too because it's like, shit, man, I I'm going through this change. Somebody's going to get, or this person's going to get hurt by it or this person's going to get affected by it or these people are already coming at me like, whoa, whoa, like rah, 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 you can't do this to us. And so now you've got all this fear. But what I feel like is really happening for you here, Cancer, is that you are entering into the realm of understanding the truth about free will and understanding that you can't heal everybody. You can't, you can't make everybody happy. If somebody's going to happy, they have to use to choose to use their own free will to take the steps. This is not an easy lesson for any of, us, any of us to learn, but I feel like cancer, this is more so less of an easy message for you 
because of the way that you, because of the value that you put on your family, your friends, the people's closest to you, your community, that kind of energy. I'm definitely getting that this is a message for a Cancerian that really truly values being of service to others. But Cancer, you cannot be truly be of service to others in the way that you really desire or the way that is truly effective if you are not there for yourself first, if you do not have these boundaries. And the last card that you have here, Cancer, is the star. This card did come face down, okay? But this is healing and it's faith. So you are definitely feeling inspired to move in a different direction right now. And yes, Cancer, there is definitely some fear surrounding this. But you have every right to move in this direction as it is your right to free will. But it's coming through as the star because this change is, I'm hearing words like pretty catastrophic, like it's pretty big, but it's a necessary change. Cancer, I'm hearing that. I'm definitely hearing that. It is a necessary change. And it's showing up as the star because you're needing to have faith because you have no idea where this is going to lead you. You have no idea how this is going to end up. You have no idea how this is going to turn out or what's going to transpire as you move through this process. But you need to have faith because you are moving in the right direction and healing is coming to this situation, okay? You have every right to choose how you wanna move forward in terms of your own personal free will. I'm going to leave it there, Cancer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next session or our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs> hey there, Leo. Welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So let's get into this here, and let's see what crystal message, healing crystal message we have for you at this time for Leo. What message do we have for Leo at this time, please, Spirit? Oh, there it is. Ooh, this is one of my favorites, Leo. This is absolutely one of my favorites. And it is black tourmaline protection. All right, look, check it out, Leo. I'm gonna be real with you. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to strike fear. I'm not trying to cause panic or anything, but you need to be focusing on protecting your energy right now. Okay. Protecting yourself from um, energetic vampires. Definitely did just hear that. Uh, also, I'm feeling like you need to protect your energy or work on protecting your energy right now because you are in some sort of creative process. You're trying to develop something. Um, you're, you're, you have, some of you have new career ventures in mind. Um, you have new pathways. I hear, I'm hearing new pathways are opening up to you or have opened up to you. And you've since made a decision in how you want to move forward. And you're moving in that direction. You need to keep yourself very safe and protective, uh, protected. This is a time period where I feel like you may want to spend as much, solid, much time in solitude as you can. Okay, uh, for some of you, I feel like there are actively some people, I'm hearing gang stalking, there are actively some people that may out be out to get you, may be out to sabotage you, may be out to cause you harm or difficulty in some way, all right? Uh, others of you, this is ex specifically because of your, what it is that you're creating, I'm feeling. Um, it could be one or the other, it could be both. But I am definitely getting that there is some sort of creative process that you are undergoing right now, that you are in the process of moving through, and you really want to protect your energy or you really want to protect this seedling, okay? For obvious reasons, just because, you know, it's brand new, you don't want to, you don't want interference, you don't want anything to come, anything to cause it harm. It really doesn't have to be malicious, okay? The reasons why... You need to protect yourself, but uh, look, this is a <laughs> this is a, a general reading, you guys. Okay, so I'm not gonna rule that element out. I did definitely feel that for some of you. Okay, um, look, Leo, there's this energy about you right now where people, I feel like people are looking at you and thinking, who the f does this person think they are? Or let's knock them off their high horse for some reason or whatnot, whatever. But Leo. 
I feel like you have every right to be in that energy or to take that stance. I don't know. I'm not getting any sort of specifics on why or what may have happened for you in the past, what may have transpired to lead you to this energy or this point of view or this stance that you're holding, but like straight up and down, seven, wand, seven of wands energy out the whole, out the wazoo. Six and seven of wands energy, okay? The seven of wands is needing to hold your space, stand your ground, hold some sort of boundaries or defenses. The six of wands is an energy of victory. But it's also the type of energy that would attract in negative or dark-oriented individuals or entities that would want to knock you off your high horse. And Leo, I feel like you... Really, Jinx? I just let you inside. You're going to have to wait, Cat. No, you're going to have to wait. Um, sorry. Uh, Leo, I feel like you're justified. You have every reason and every right to stand in that energy. I also feel like, though, you're not trying to boast. You're not trying to be too proud. You're not trying to be in people's face about it. I feel like you're being very, very humble about it whatever this victory is for you, but there are still some individuals that would like to tear you down or knock you down a peg. And so you really, at this time, you really want to, you really want to focus on protecting yourself. Okay, hold on a second. I have to let Jinx back outside. Okay, Leo, sorry about that. So let's read, let's read um, the message from the book here. Yeah, here we go. If black tourmaline has come to you today, Something has or will test your ability to trust yourself and stand in your personal power with absolute confidence in the light that you are. See, let me stop right there because this is where that I'm getting that energy of you are very much in the right, it feels like, to hold the stance or hold the position that you are currently holding, okay? And there are people out there or there are energies out there that straight up just don't fucking like that for whatever reason it is. And I don't know. I don't know what it is, Leo. But quite frankly, it doesn't matter. Because that's their problem, not yours. Okay? Let's move forward. When situations present uh, to us in life that we are supposed to take, uh, take action upon, very often we, re we react losing control of our mental ability. It is here that fear lives and desire for protection arises. There is truly nothing to be fearful of in the entire universe except your own mind out of control. It creates all pain and suffering, but in turn, in its state of mastery, can recreate heaven on earth. This is speaking of the mind, okay? So either the mind can run amok and create fear and confusion and suffering, or if you hold your mind steady and work on really controlling the mind instead of allowing the mind to control you, it can be your strongest, one of your strongest tools and a really excellent ally in creating heaven on earth. But here's the other thing that I'm getting here because the others, whomever it is that you feel or that you need protection from, they are caught up in fear, straight up and down, Leo. They're caught up in fear. They're a slave to their mind. They're a slave to the system. They're a slave to those who seek to control them. And in turn, they seek to control you because they see you out here living your best life, doing all it is that you do, walking with God's source creator, being protected, okay? Being authentic being real, being truly you, being free. And they are not. And that scares them. Or it pisses them off. Again, who the fuck do you think you are coming out here, living your life, shining your light, being all extra like that? Yo, yo, knock them down a peg. We'll show them something. We'll teach them a lesson. And yet, the more they try to teach you a lesson, the more that shit backfires on them. Sorry, I lost my place here. Oh, okay. 
Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. While you learn this lesson on all levels or perhaps even take a break to recharge, black tourmaline is your friend, allowing a protected, secure, and safe place of learning. Okay, look, Leo, I am totally vibing on this with you. Aside from the fact that I have a lot of e Leo energy uh, within me, to, regardless of whatever chart, whatever system you use, whether it be um, whether it be Western, whether it be which is tropical or mainstream, or it be Eastern or like Hindu, um, Hindu or Vedic astrology or sidereal astrology, I have Leo in my chart. Okay, so I resonate with Leo energy all the time, with like crazy. But I'm also resonating with this for you right now, Leo, because I have find I found my find I currently <laughs> currently find myself in an extreme solitude energy. Like it's gotten to the point where there were there was a time where I left my doors and my windows open. I live in Puerto Rico right now. I left my doors and windows open to allow just the air to move flow through and, and it's hot and I don't have air conditioning, right? But okay. But I also wanted the, the natural air to just flow through and now doors shut, shutters are down, blinds are closed, ain't nothing from the outside world coming into my space. Any longer, I wanna say, but we'll just, we'll just say for right now. Why? because I need this space, I need this protection, I need this sanctuary from the outside world and outside influences and anyone that would wish to do me harm. Anyone or anything that would wish to do me harm. Case in point, Leo, when I first moved here to Puerto Rico, when I had a dream, and some of you that have been following me for long enough, you remember this dream, but I had a dream that some angry, masculine energy, person, it showed up as a person, um, in the dream, wanted to get into my apartment and broke into my apartment. Now, they didn't harm me, but they broke into my apartment. And when I confronted them about it, they took one of the glasses that was on, one, on my kitchen counter and threw it on the floor and smashed it on the ground to reinforce their anger. And I said, no, you have got to get out of here. You are not welcome in here. Of course, a whole year later, is when I finally decide to close myself off so that outside energies can't get in, get into at least my personal space. But I'm here and it's working and it's wonderful, Leo. So if you need to do that right now, if you feel called to do that, whether you've been feeling called to do that in some way or just listening to me explain that to you is like, bingo, let's try that, then do it, Leo. Protect yourself and protect your safe space. Cleanse that space, yeah? Sage the shit out of it if you want. Sage it, uh, uh, what is it, uh, um, Palo Santo, anything, anything that you can use to clear your space, your personal space, this, your living space, okay? Anything that you can do to cleanse it of outside foreign energies, I don't care if they're good or bad. If anything that you can do to cleanse your space of outside energies, anything that is not of you or not of your own self, your own essence, your own being, get it out of there, do it. And then fill that energy or fill that space, excuse me, with your energy. Ooh, okay, whether good or bad. And then you can, like if it's good, great, keep flowing with it. But if you're finding negative stuff coming out, filling your space, coming from you, then that's excellent because then that will show you where you can work on some healing. Okay, beautiful Leo. I'm gonna get into some tarot for you here. Yes, I'm gonna give this three shuffles. So let's get some tarot messages for Leo at this time, please. Spirit, in terms of this protection that's needed, this black tourmaline energy that is around or required for Leo at this time. All right, messages from the tarot, please. Spirit for Leo in relation to this protection that is needed. Okay. Overall energy is the emperor. And the emperor is saying to you that you are the one, what I'm hearing is Leo, you need to be in control of your space. 
or you need to be in control of your environment, your surroundings. Uh, the emperor can be, well, is, is a controlling entity, okay? Whether it's good or bad, whether the energy, whether, whether that's being expressed in a good way or a bad way, it's still a controlling energy, all right? But he's controlling, when he's positively aspected, the emperor represents control. Sorry about that, Leo. I just wanted to let whatever that vehicle was to go by so that you guys could hear. But, um, oh, poop. Control here, Leo, but control that is protective, okay? Setting boundaries that are protective. Uh, discipline. What I'm getting for you, Leo, and it's so crazy, Leo, because in my own personal readings, I do pull cards for myself every once in a while. Um, and it, for me personally, the emperor has been coming up. And the emperor is coming up as a protective energy. The emperor is saying to me, Eric, you know where your boundaries need to lie right now. And it is time for you to enforce that. Whatever boundaries that come up for you here, Leo, however you need to be protective of yourself at this time, it is 100% necessary. Okay, you have four more cards here. All of them fell face down. Um, so the main focus for you right now, Leo, the main focus for you right now, Leo, is protection. Okay, underneath the emperor is the lovers and the eight of pentacles. All right, um, and, and I wasn't going to take this at first, but then I saw what else came out here. And now I do want to take it because for some of you, this actually does have some sort of um, love connotation is speaking to a love situation for you or it's about interpersonal relationships okay but there is a choice that you have in front of you or that you have had in front of you whether you've made this choice yet or not the choice is here the lovers and it's the choice of what it is you want to work on what it is you want to put your consistent consistent effort into ultimately leo you have that choice it is yours okay the lovers, all right? But what else has come out here? You have the two of cups. And this is why I took the lovers because the, love, the, the two of cups is like a minor arcana version of the lovers. And this is what's giving me that energy of either this is romantic or this is interpersonal relationships, just like friendships, family, uh, associations, whatever, other people. You have relationships here that are coming to an end and or need to come to an end. You have the two of cups, with the Ten of Swords, the Four of Swords, and the Eight of Swords, okay? So there are some sort of interpersonal relationships here, again, whether it's romantic or just platonic. There are interpersonal relationships here that have you trapped in some sort of mental prison, some sort of societal standard, something like that, and you're needing to bring that to an end. You're needing to bring that to a close. For some of you, that has come to a close, okay? And so with the Four of Swords and the Eight of Swords energy, this is a time of protection. This is a time of solitude that is that in which you are going to be able to mentally break free from some sort of imprisonment or attachment or en 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 entanglement. Oh, I thought I was going to have to pause again. Okay. Um, and so I am feeling very specifically that you have already ended these situations or you're taking steps to end these situations. And now you need to be in a bit of a solitary energy, a solitude, so that you can work on clearing your mind, meditating, and getting yourself out of some sort of restrictive mindset. Okay? For others of you, this is what is saying is needs to happen. And the emperor is coming in here saying, you need to put protective boundaries around you. This is a discipline. This is a disciplinarian type situation. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you, Leo. The energy, even though it's even the, the energy feels coming from the emperor is feeling very, very stern, very, very stern. But it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's not because you're being grounded. It's not because you've stepped out of line. It's because you, it's, 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 a, it's a very important and stern message for you because you need this protection at this time. No if, ands, or buts about it, okay? This is literally the loving masculine energy of the universe coming through for you saying we need you to protect yourself. You need to be protected so that you can go through some sort of healing. All right, Leo? Okay. 
I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I am sending you so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Yeah, let's get into this here and see what message we have for Virgo at this time. Please, spirit, what message, what healing message do we have for Virgo at this time? What message do we have for Virgo at this time? Please, spirit, what healing message do we have for Virgo at this time? There we go. Oh, Oh, ooh. Okay, we're just going to take one of them. And it is Kunzite. Heart activation. Now, I will say, I will say, let's see, is it, I, I will say that two cards did come out here for you. Um, and I don't, good Lord, hold on. I don't remember the name of the crystal. But it was a it was, it was represents star seed, um, star seed activation. I think it was. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna find it for you, Virgo, because I really only want to take one card here, right? But I definitely do feel like Virgo that is part of your message, so I at least want to show it to you before we move on. But we're gonna focus on Kunzite here, heart activation. Um, so there is an energy for you, Virgo, of heart activation, like we said, um, but there is also, I feel like there's an energy of you becoming aware of um, your star seed elements or maybe uh, uh, past lives that you may have lived or lives that you may have lived in other star systems or it feels like your heart may be opening up at this time to the possibility of um, other star systems, other galaxies, other life forms, all that kind of stuff. Hold on. I just want, where is this card? Where is this card? It was at the very top of the deck. Good Lord. I hate it when that happens, but it's this one. It was Moldavite. Moldavite came out with this, with this card and this says star child. Okay. But, um, what you have here is the card that came out on top, which is Kunzite. Okay, which is heart activation. So for some of you, that star, star child element does resonate, will resonate. For others of you, it doesn't matter. Um, that is not part of the message. And quite frankly, it really just doesn't matter. Because basically what's coming or what's happening here for you, Virgo, right now is a heart activation. Okay, and this actually could be a relationship. A new relationship, a new partner, a new romantic partner, or maybe just a new friendship that is allowing you to have this heart activation, okay? It, it, obviously, if, it's a, if this relationship is romantic in nature, then yes. I mean, that flow of love between you and this other person, whether you want to call it that or not, but with the flow of love between you and this other person is absolutely helping you to heal in some ways, to open up your heart a little bit more, to not be so... resistant to love. What I'm also hearing is damages are being undone, which is beautiful. For others of you, this this relationship is strictly platonic, but it's a friend, a very close friend, or uh, someone that you feel connected to, you feel honored by, you feel heard by, you heal, you, you feel, excuse me, you feel heard by, which is helping you to heal. You feel respected by, Someone that you really can speak to or speak with, I'll say, uh, from a very honest place, in a very truthful manner, and there is reciprocity here, okay? And that's allowing your heart to open up in ways that it may not have been open to in a very long time, yes? So let's read this from the book. In the simplest of terms, if Kunzite has come to you, she has come to activate the heart and open you to a new level of love, both internally and in the world around you. Kunzite reminds us that as the world around us evolves and changes, 
the levels of love and activities that must be undertaken to recognize that love also vary. She comes as a messenger, entering life when we are missing something that the world around us is offering. She has come to help you see through the heart and receive what you deserve, not by defining it, but simply knowing it is there in absolute open-hearted, deserving trust. In the coming days, hold your judgments, mental chatter, and perceptions, and trust your feelings without the need to label them. Just feel your way. Let your heart be your guide, and the unconditional love that surrounds us all will have a chance to enter your life. Just as a falling tree in the forest won't break the eternal silence if there is no one there to hear it, unconditional love will also be around you if you simply allow and don't limit it with the mind. And as someone that shares in this Virgo energy with you, as in the fact that in tropical astrology, Western astrology, mainstream astrology, I have a Virgo rising, I am well aware of how the mind can really hinder our process or our progress, can really be a blockage for us. Virgo energy tends has this tendency, especially when we're stressed out, we have this tendency to really get lost in the logic, in the mental process, okay? Um, so, and I do feel like that's something that's healing for you right now. Last shuffle. All right, so let's get into some tarot messages for you, Virgo, in terms of this Kunzite heart activation. Yes? What messages do we have for Virgo, please, at this time? In terms of this healing message? In terms of this heart activation? You know, some of you may have been labeled an ice queen for a long time. But you're finally starting to thaw. To thaw? To thaw. You're finally starting to break free. You're finally starting to feel relief from the ice that has encapsulated your heart over long periods of time. Maybe even lifetimes for some of you. Oh, wow. And as I say that, I look at the bottom of the deck and it's the world. Yeah. There is a, oh, oh, Virgo, there is a big healing that's happening for you right now. Big, major, cycle, major, major cycles of heart deactivation or your heart being closed off are finally starting to come to an end. You're finally starting to break free from this. Two cards. You have judgment. But judgment is in in reverse. And you have the three of cups, which is also in reverse. Okay. What's really interesting about this, Virgo, is that judgment comes right before the world. And what I feel like here is that you are approaching the energies of the world, which would represent a completion of an old circumstance or a life cycle, okay? And with judgment and the three of cups in reverse here, I feel like you have crossed, you have passed beyond the energies of what judgment would represent for you, which would be that calling, which would be that universal wake up call or that alarm clock or that message of, redemption and healing or the t or the call to say it's time to rise again resurrection type energies and what i feel like here is that call virgo was a call for you to leave some sort of hive mind i am hearing a comfort zone energy um you may have had a group of people around you that you identified with at some time a group of people around you that validated your feelings and your beliefs around whatever it was that was causing your heart to be closed off. And now you are rising above that or you are choosing to go beyond that, to move past that 
in order to bring this cycle to a close. I want to pull one more time for you, Virgo. Any more messages for Virgo, please, in terms of this heart activation? Any more messages for Virgo in terms of this heart? Yeah, okay. So what it is, exactly. Six of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck now. So what it is that you are moving away from is a lack mentality type of energy. Five of Pentacles. This is very much a woe is me or misery loves company type of energy. And where it is you're moving forward towards now is a place of greater reciprocity and greater happiness because you have finally found the understanding or the point of view that you need to help break you free or remove the tower of judgment that the devil or toxic energies may have helped you construct. Okay? Two more cards here that have fallen face down. You have, yes, interesting, Virgo. So what it is you're coming out of here, you have the Four of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, and the Five of Wands, okay? So I feel like this is the past energy that you were breaking free from. And I feel like the Five of Wands energy is a level of inner conflict because something was trying to be handed to you in the past, most likely love somehow, Four of Cups, and you adamantly would not accept it. Because you were rooted in this five of pentacles energy. But there was something in you that fought against that. There was, I, I'm picking up on Virgo, there was some sort of inner dialogue that was happening within you, within you. Obviously, it was an inner dialogue, Eric. But anyway, there was some sort of inner dialogue that says to you, you're, you're being hurt in this situation. Okay, this is a painful energy for you to be in. And the universe keeps handing us opportunities to rise out above that, but you keep rejecting it. Why? It doesn't make any sense. You don't like being in this place, or let's keep it in terms of the inner, inner dialogue. I don't like being here. I don't like feeling like this. I don't like being associated with these people or this, this mindset. This does not feel good. So what do I do here? Well, you change the process. And you accept that which is being handed to you, which is actually a way out. And if this is in the form of a relationship, I want to make it very clear that it doesn't mean that this relationship is necessarily going to last forever or this is your life partner or you're going to marry this person. But quite frankly, Virgo, that's not really quite necessary. Because ultimately, if this is... Uh, manifesting in your life in the form of a relationship, then this is, it's serving its purpose. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in, Virgo. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> Hey Libra, welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So let's get straight into it, yeah Libra? <clears throat> what message do we have for Libra at this time? What healing message, healing crystal energy do we have for my Libras at this time? Please spirit, whoa, there it is right there. Okay, you have, oh, oh, there's more than one here. Okay, I'm going to take both. Two cards have come out here, Libra. I'm going to take both just as um, a part of the message, but I'm only, really, I'm only going to focus on reading one of them. Uh, and what you have here is Sugar Light, the inner child. And you also have that coupled with Opal, which is emotional magnification. All right, Libra. So there is definitely some inner child healing that is coming up, bubbling up to the surface for you. Um, and I feel like there are lots of emotions that you are, that are also, that are bubbling up because of this, because of this. What I want to say, Libra, is that I, I, I want, I, I want to encourage you to take this head on, like literally take the bull by the horns here and face this head on. 
because ultimately whatever is coming up for you right now is necessary for your healing um, and you're ready to handle it. I will say that, okay? Um, so this is all for you right now, Libra. The message is all about or is surrounding healing the inner child, working with the inner child, but also allowing yourself to be very, 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 very aware of what is coming up for you emotionally in terms of bringing balance to your life with the inner child, okay? So definitely um, childhood traumas, things that may be, and, and this could be a situation, Libra, in which certain things come up that you haven't thought about in years, uh, maybe even decades, okay? Things that you actually kind of forgot about didn't even realize was still a thing for you, didn't even realize was still hurting you or still causing issues for you, okay? Allow yourself to heal, allow yourself to focus, on, uh, uh, to view those things, to become, a, to a, allow yourself to be aware of those things as they come up, okay, Libra? Let's read this from the card, from the book, sorry, from the book, here we go. If sugar light, the crystal of, in, of the inner child, has made itself present today, the voice of purpose is echoing all around you. The question is, however, will you hear it? The inner child could be described as the unencumbered voice or expression of the spirit that you are. It is a part of you that understands its purpose and reason for living. Its main job is to consistently deliver this to you under the guidance of spirit through the veil of physicality to keep you on your path. But physicality is complex, multifaceted, and distracting. So to blossom into a mastered part of an individual, the inner child must be managed and parented correctly. Only then can the voice of the spirit be filtered into physicality with truth. The key lesson here is one of balance and mastery. Laughter Happiness and play are all forms of expression that allow unconditional love to flow from us and the voice of the inner child to be heard. But discernment is still required for these things to be constructive on a life path. In the presence of sugar light, take time to let the voice of your spirit be filtered through the heart. And then it's up to you to take action in the physical world. Remember also that laughter is often the best medicine, but it may also be a set of universal earplugs that allow the true self to be hidden from the world, crushing the inner child. Hold on a second. Did I say that correctly? Yeah. Okay. By Sugar Light, on this day, you have been called into service to the self. Let your actions in the world echo your response in the halls of wisdom, love, and power. And on this day, take hold of your destiny into light. Sugar light also appears to those that must or are working with children to stimulate the process and further define the roles of their words, worlds, and ways. Okay, okay, Libra. Uh, this isn't bad. I like this. This is a really beautiful energy for you here. So let's get into some tarot. Yeah, three shuffles. For Libra. What other messages do we have for Libra in terms of uh, Sugar Light's appearance for Libra? One last time. Shuffle. I wanted to say one last time. One last time time that's making me think of that song uh one more time by um daft punk from their harder better faster album of harder better strong wow actually no that was one of the other songs what's what was that discovery anyway one more time by um daft punk and actually, what I'm feeling here is that could, that song could actually be a portal for you, an energetic portal or an energetic gateway to help you connect emotionally with your inner child. Something about that song would trigger a time in your life where you could connect with the inner child from a beneficial 
in a beneficial way, okay? But let's see, what other messages do we have for Libra? Messages for Libra, please, Spirit. Okay. You have the Page of Wands at the bottom of the deck that can absolutely represent the inner child. Okay, especially from a spiritual point of view, because wands are the suit of spirit and creativity, passion and excitement and 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 and, and create and all that good stuff. Okay, bear with me for a second, Libra. Let me make sense of this. You have a number of cards here. Um, a few of them are in reverse. You have the Two of Cups. You have temperance, both are in reverse here. You have that also with the two of swords, the knight of pentacles and death. I wanna start here with death. You're going through some sort of transformation, Libra. Okay, and slowly but surely, you're making your way through this. I do feel like you're very committed to whatever transformation you are moving through right now, whatever path it is that you're walking that is transforming your life for you, okay? You do have the Page of Wands at the bottom of the deck, which definitely could be representing you re-identifying yourself, changing your alignment, I'm hearing. Now, um, you have the Two of Swords here, which I don't feel like is a bad thing. I don't. Because what you also have is temperance and the two of cups in reverse. And I, what this is kind of saying to me here, Libra, is that you're giving up on some sort of relationship. You're not putting in the time and the effort any longer. Um, maybe this is either, this could either be a specific relationship or certain relationship values. But what I'm getting with the Two of Cups and Temperance in Reverse is that you're not willing to go through any sort of process of um, alchemizing or fusing with, fusing together with someone, finding a way to find balance between the two of you. You're not, you're not doing that at all. You're actually very adamantly not doing that any longer. You have the Two of Swords here. It feels like there is a conscious effort to block that out. And instead, you're moving in a different direction. Slowly but surely, you've decided to move in a different direction. And, and, and Libra, I feel like this is connected to you connecting to your inner child, having connected to your inner child. And recognizing, realizing that there, this needs to be a time for yourself. So it may not be that you are completely rejecting a certain relationship or even relationships in general. For some of you, it could be like, it could just be that that element or that part of your life is being put on the back burner. Maybe not even on the back burner. You may be, you may have put that on ice altogether, but it feels like whether you're doing, whether you're doing this now, you've made this decision to do this now, or the message is that you need to do this. Um, this is all in service of you going through some sort of transformation, death, and rebuilding your life somehow with the Knight of Pentacles. Okay. Last card, it is face down. Oh, it's the Nine of Swords. Woo. But this is you dealing with whatever is coming up as you're working with your inner child. Nightmares, fear, panic. But Libra, as I was saying all that, I was hearing illusion. The fear, the panic, it's all an illusion. But what I'm really getting is just the energy of you dealing with the heartbreak, you dealing with the emotions. I want to get another pull on this Nine of Swords, please. Where's this Nine of Swords for Libra? The Tower. Look at that. Honestly, Libra, I don't feel like... Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. You're showing up for your own reading here now, Libra. But um, I don't feel like the Nine of Swords is an energy of 
really fear or illusion or fearing worst case scenarios. I literally feel like the nine of swords is you going through that process of dealing with whatever is coming up for you on a mental level. Because there is massive change happening for you. The tower. And you have this with the nine of pentacles. Which is saying that you're in the process of moving into an energy of independence. So it could be that part of your wounding or part of how it is you learned to cope from whatever damage or wounding your inner child has sustained, it developed certain codependent tendencies. But now you're working through those codependent tendencies and ultimately are bringing balance into your life. There you are, justice. Okay? And you do all of this by connecting with healing and working with your inner child. Beautiful. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you so much love and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs> hey, Scorpio. Welcome to your liquid queen liquid crystal healing message thank you guys so very much for tuning in so let's get into this scorpio let's see what message do we have for scorpio at this time for my scorpios what healing message do we have for scorpio at this time what message do you have for scorpio at this time please spirit crystals for scorpio okay all right scorpio so the focus of your message right now is, in fact, focus, as you're right, okay? And who else got this? Taurus got this as well. Interesting, Scorpio, because Taurus is your uh, di direct opposite in terms of the zodiac. Now, for you, Scorpio, your focus is needed in the uh, um, because... You seem to be coming into a line, uh, in into, uh, blah, 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 blah. you seem to be coming into alignment with some form of service. Uh, you have that with Larimar, which is service. You have Garnet, which is manifestation of purpose. And then you have, I'm sorry, yeah, manifestation of purpose. And then you have Carnelian, which is creativity. Um, I'm really only going to, I'm going to take the one, the card that was on top, and that is uh, focus with Azurite. But it seems that all of these other energies are a part of your situation. And interestingly enough, when I was first looking at Garnet here, I saw uh, uh, magnification of purpose. That's what I was seeing for you originally. But it says, in fact, it says manifestation of purpose, okay? Which actually makes sense. So, Scorpio, I feel like you're coming into a, a situation or a time in your life where you are coming into alignment with your mode of service, okay? So this could be for an individual that is recently having woken up to their service, uh, to their form of service, to how they would like to be of service, or m maybe just, um, and 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 it doesn't necessarily have to be um, in a situation where you're overtly or blatantly being of service to others. But whatever it is you feel called to, there is a level of mission work, there is a level of manifestation and magnification of your life purpose, okay? Whatever that is for you. Um, it seems that you're coming online with that. It seems like you're getting into alignment with that. And it seems like that's that's moving to the forefront of your mind, Scorpio. And for some of you, I feel like you may even feel like it's it's consuming you. It's all you can think about. It's all that you can focus on at this time. But that's not a bad thing, okay? What I'm feeling like in terms of that, if you are one of those people that feels like it's really taking over your life, Quite frankly, Scorpio, it's meant to. It's part of the purpose of your life, but it's taking over your life right now because that's where your focus needs to be, okay? In order to bring this into fruition. So, um, like I said, Taurus got this card as well, also. So I highly recommend that maybe you watch Taurus's message here, but I'm going to read this card for you. Um, but you may also want to listen to what we talked about with Taurus and the focus, okay? So here we go. 
If Azure Rite has come to you today, it usually means that something is trapped in the subconscious level of self that is being denied its path of realization and or healing. Azure Rite simply indicates the need to unite the mental self into action with focused purpose, something often easier said than done. The basis of this energy is truth with self, which will activate the wisdom, focus, self-love, and other pathways of action to get the job done. Scatter is about to be a thing of the past. Think before acting, or so we are taught. A wisdom that is great if understood to mean the whole mind and discovery of your united mental directive. But that is not what we generally do. Azure Rite has rushed to your side to open you mentally to your infinite possibilities. He knows if the spirit can be given a moment to breathe, it will deliver your sacred path into the world. Expect greatness from yourself, and so it will be. Be focused on one thing physically. It opens infinite doors for the spirit to work its magic. No focus and no one gains. It's your choice. I choose truth, and it never lets me down. Let it be your guide. With Azurite as your guide, you are being offered the chance to do something very special. When the inspiration comes, take fearless action. Beautiful. All right, so um, let's get into the tarot here. Yeah, let's get a little bit deeper with this. I'm going to give this three shuffles for you, Scorpio. This is one. Ooh, okay, we have a card that's come out here already for you, Scorpio, and it is the Magician. Okay, yeah. So you're definitely coming into a time, this is a very, very similar message to Taurus, which again, I think is pretty awesome because you and Taurus are literally exact opposites of each other in the Zodiac, okay? Um, all right, so this is two. So you come into a time period, Scorpio, where your focus is definitely needed, because you are in the process of manifesting something, and I definitely feel like what I heard, well, let's say this, this is three. Um, what I heard was that, you know, oh shoot, now I've lost what I heard. But basically it's coming into focus. It's something in direct alignment with you. There's probably a lot of passion that's coming up with this here for you, the magician. So your focus is needed because you're definitely manifesting something new. And what I'm also hearing is that this manifestation is in line with your life purpose. And that's why it's coming out so strongly for you, okay? Why it could be taking up every, like, and this could be, this could absolutely be something that you are influenced or wanting to manifest that could be completely out of character for you or out of character of some uh, uh, um, in terms of what it is that you normally do, what it is that you normally go after. There is also a, a level of learning here for some of you in order to gain a, a new skill or a new skill set to bring this into fruition, to bring this into manifestation. And so that's why also I feel like your focus is being consumed so, like, so heavy, right? And that's also what's giving me the feeling of that this could be something that's really new to you because you're really having to learn something new. You're having to focus to bring some sort of new experience or um, new tangible thing to life. Ace of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck, okay? But let's see, what other messages do we have for Scorpio in terms of Azure Right and focus? In terms of this focus here, what other messages do we have for Scorpio in terms of focus and Azure Right? Okay. Okay. You have two of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, Scorpio. And you have three other cards. One of them has fallen face up, and it's the Ten of Wands in reverse. So whatever it is that you're working on manifesting, I, I'm also hearing wanting to say manifesting your way out of, it's something that's releasing burdens in your life. Okay, for some of you, I'm picking up on the fact that uh, in your life up until this moment, you have been heavily resisting um, something about your life or something about your path that is destined to be a part of your life or your path. And as you were resisting that, it's almost, I'm picking up for somebody here that, you know, you were trying everything you could 
other than this one thing that your soul has kind of been like trying to guide you towards or trying to influence you to take up. And now you're actually doing it. Um, and as you're taking up whatever it is your soul has been guiding you towards, a lot of the burdens that you have picked up over time by not doing this, by avoiding this, are literally melting away, are literally falling away. And for some of you, you're starting to realize that you never would have had to carry these burdens if you had just listened to yourself to begin with in the first place. But I don't want you to, I don't want you to get caught up in that. And I definitely don't want you to be judging yourself for that because technically this is all part of the process anyway. Like on a soul level, your soul knew that there was a good possibility that we were going to have to, you know, we were going to have to acquire all these burdens just to get you to, to change or, or uh, accept or adjust. Okay. So, all right. That's cool. Um, I do like the fact that those burdens are being released. Wow. Scorpio. Yeah. Those burdens really are being released because now the next two cards that you have that did fall face down, you have the 10 of swords, which is upright and the nine of wands, which is upright. Okay. So for some of you, what it is you're manifesting is a level of sovereignty, is a level of independence. You may be starting a new business. But for others of you, this could be that the Nine of Pentacles Hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I just went blank on that. This Nine of Pentacles energy could be you standing on your own standing in alignment with who you are and manifesting from that place, okay? Again, some of you could be manifesting a new job or a level of independence, or this manifestation is coming from a level of independence, is coming from standing on your own, being an individual, being a sovereign human being, okay? And creating from that space. Nine of Pentacles. All right. And then at the bottom of the deck, Scorpio, you do have the two of pentacles and then the world. There you go. So you have the 10 of wands in reverse, the 10 of swords upright, and then the world. Okay. So these are all completion energies, right? But in you dropping whatever burden it is you were carrying by not mad, by not going after what it is you've been guided to go after, what was truly in alignment with you, by you dropping the burdens you also dropped the struggle. You also dropped the destruction. You also dropped the difficulty you may have been having, may have been experiencing, okay? And that's all coming from a place of independence. It's also coming from a place of greater, it's also coming, it's also leading you to a great, a place of a greater independence, <laughs> okay? Um, so as your overall energy right now is the two of pentacles to the world. So what I feel like this focus energy is telling you or is speaking to for many of you right now, Scorpio, is to just continue focusing on what it is you are manifesting, what it is you are actively creating right now, because I definitely do feel like it's creating the change that you want. Ultimately, it's, it is or and or is going to be creating the change that you want. What I heard also, though, was that you're going to have to surf the waves for a little while. Okay, and that's coming from the two of pentacles. And if you see, you look at the back here at the at that part of the card right there, you see that if it will focus, it's a little blurry, but the water, the water in this card is not calm. It's choppy and it's wavy. Okay, there is a level of needing to keep the balance, keep your physical reality in check as you focus on <clears throat> moving out of this cycle. Okay. Last thing that I want to talk about, what I'm getting from this Nine of Pentacles energy here, Scorpio, is that you, some of you are actively um, de developing a business for yourself. You're manifesting a business. Okay. But the big the big message or the big thing that's coming, the biggest thing that's coming through with the Tarot here in terms of this focus energy for you, Scorpio, is that whatever it is you're manifesting, however it is you are focused here, it's from a very independent place. No outside interjection or anything like that. And that's actually a very, very good thing here. Okay? 
it needs to stay <clears throat> it needs to stay on an individual basis all right, Scorpio, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love, and I look forward to, connect to, you, to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> Hey there, Ophiuchus. Welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So, Sorry, cat hair. So let's get into this and see what message we have for you, for Ophiuchus. What message, what crystal message do we have for Ophiuchus at this time? Please, spirit, what message do we have for Ophiuchus at this time? Ophiuchus. What message do we have for Ophiuchus at this time? Please, spirit, there it is right there. All right. We have adventuring. Ooh, the unlimited self. You know, um, well, not adventure, it's aventuring. Okay, sorry about that. But I do kind of get this feeling of adventure for you, Ophiuchus. Um, and it may, <clears throat> what I am picking up on here is that this could be some of you actually recently or just now discovering what or who Ophiuchus is in the Zodiac. And I, I'm feeling pretty specifically that you, somebody here has landed on this reading, having recently come to the awareness that Ophiuchus is a placement for you, whether it's sun, moon, rising, one of the major placements, I would say, or you're just, um, you're, <sighs> what I just heard Ophiuchus was that you are allowing this, you're allowing yourself to accept this as a part of your life. It could be the fact that you have Ophiuchus placed in your chart and you're taking that into account or you're taking that seriously. Or there's something about yourself that you have recently discovered. Or maybe I, I just get this feeling that maybe you are going on some sort of adventure. And it feels like an adventure of the self. But adventuring... It says it is it speaks to the unlimited self, and when I read, when I feel that, when I read in through, when I read into that for you, oh, for you, because I just feel like you're discovering the infinites of you, which technically would say that you're actually also discovering or diving into the infinites of the universe, the infinite reality. Of all that is there's some sort of we're gonna read through the card but there's some sort of um, there's just some sort of adventure some sort of discovery that you are making that you're diving into I feel like you're very enthusiastic about this it's very exciting it's a brand new thing there's a you're like surrounded by or filled with this sense of wonder it's a very cool feeling for you, Ophiuchus. Let's read through what the card has to say. If aventuring has come to you today, it's time to give thanks for your unlimited potential, release all fears, and once again take up the reins of life in a bold and brave fashion. In aventuring's presence, you are being asked to trust in your divinely or divine potential Empower your, win your wonderful gift of free will and create whatever world you wish around you. The only limitation facing any of us in, is the limitation we have placed upon our perception. For what we perceive becomes our reality. Okay, so right there, that already is saying to me, that's confirming to me that there's something, there's a new awareness that's coming into your life. And I feel very strongly that instead of blocking it or rejecting it or not accepting it because it doesn't fit some sort of mold or some sort of previous definition that you held, instead of tossing it away, you're exploring it, okay? Aventurine's message is clear. Nothing is impossible. And if there are things which you have always wanted to create in your life, see them not as stopping points, but stepping stones in the adventure to the unlimited creation, something that lives well and truly outside of our earthly perceptions. 
For if it did not, it would be trapped in the perceived prison of physicality. Remember also that aventurine also, I'm sorry, that aventurine is also the stone of the first seven years of life. You are being guided to release any pains or fears, forgive and go forwards while this great energy is with you. The affirmation of this card is I am the unlimited potential of creation, okay? I definitely, I really, I've been very strongly for you, Ophiuchus. There's something, there's an air of adventure around you. Three shuffles here. We'll get into some tarot. That was one. And no, I, I mean, yes, there is an air of aventurine around you, but I'm really feeling like there is an air of adventure, okay? You're exploring, you're going on a on a on a on a pilgrimage, or you're 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 going on a hunt or an excavation. It feels very exciting, very new, okay? Let's get some tarot messages for you. This is two for Ophiuchus. What messages do we have for Ophiuchus at this time, please, Spirit, in terms of adventuring? That's three. The unlimited self. All right. What messages do we have for Ophiuchus in terms of adventuring, please, Spirit? Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, yes, you're seeking. You're looking for something. Page of Swords is overall energy. You are on a quest. You are on a quest. You have four cards here. Two of them have fallen face up. Two of them have fallen face down. You have the Ace of Pentacles and Strength. And what Strength is saying to me, Ophiuchus, is that you are having the strength to go on this pilgrimage. You are having the strength to find the diamond in the rough. Mm. Two more cards here. Okay. Okay. You have Temperance and the Emperor. Now, first of all, Ophiuchus, I want you to I want you to recognize that you have three major arcana here and two minor arcana. So this is big for you. This is big, 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 big. This is big soul level stuff, which is also what makes this feel so exciting because this is way out of the mundane, way out of the mundane, okay? What the emperor is talking, speaking to here is control, yes, authority, yes, but also a level of adventure and discovery. I get this feeling that with the emperor, you're leading the charge. You are deciding what's next in your life. You are deciding what's next on your path. So, okay, so whatever it is you are working on discovering, whatever it is you are seeking or searching for, the emperor is that energy of leading the charge. It feels like Ophiuchus, especially with strength here, it feels like you're stepping into an energy of... Okay, first of all, what I heard was allowing yourself to be who you are or what you are, okay? Um, but also the emperor here is speaking to a level of authority that's saying we need to take this seriously. This is a very mature energy, Ophiuchus, because then this is also coupled with temperance. So let's use, let's use the analogy that I, that I started with. And even if you're not, even if you're not new to the le to the uh, understanding of what or who Ophiuchus is in the zodiac, just use this analogy and place it in your life as it fits. Okay, but say someone newly discovered not only Ophiuchus, but that they have a, a a major placement in Ophiuchus. Let's go ahead and say, for for benefit of the doubt, let's use an a rising sign. Of Ophiuchus. For those of you that are savvy when it comes to astrology, your rising sign often is considered the most important placement for you. Why? Because depending what was rising at the time of your birth, okay, depending what was rising at the what sign was rising at the at the time of your birth, that will set the tone 
of your chart. So if you had an Ophiuchus rising, okay, that means that uh, Sagittarius is, um, Ophiuchus is in your first house, Sagittarius would be your second house, and then around from there, okay? So whatever your rising sign is, that sets what sign is in what house. And that really sets a big tone of your life, of the map of your life. And it feels like in relation to that, then just as this is just with this as a as a um, as an example, or maybe this is actually what's happening for you. But when the emperor enters into the situation, it feels like someone is becoming aware of their Ophiuchus rising placement, we'll say, and is taking that seriously and is saying, OK, well, what does that mean for my life? And how do I move forward here? And how do I, how can I restructure my life to honor that, to reflect that? This is you owning something about yourself or about your life and about your reality, taking it seriously and then working it in to the fold, we'll say, the emperor with, the, with temperance. This is beautiful. Oh, for you, guess. this is a really wonderful, wonderful message for you. I love this for you. That's what I have. I'm going to leave it there. But thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Yes, I am sending you so much love. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next message very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So let's get into this here, Saggy. Yeah, I'm going to give the, we've got our deck here. Let's see what crystal has a message for you at this time. Yes. What healing message do we have for Sagittarius at this time? Well, there it is right there. Ooh, you have diamond, Sagittarius. Light body. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know exactly what it's referring to in the light body. Okay. Obviously, we're going to read through it and I'll get you the, and we'll read what the, the actual definition says. But straight up and down, Sag, okay, my Saggies, my Sag Metasicals, okay, with everything that we've been talking about for you over the last two years on this channel. Yes, two years since August. Y'all, I swear to God, you are probably going to get tired of me, sick and tired of hearing me talk about this damn reading from August of 2019. But check it out, Saj. What, what goes into making a diamond? Diamonds are made out of carbon, right? Okay. And what actually creates a diamond? The process of applying physical pressure to it. Well, you sure have been under a lot of a pressure lately, haven't you, Sagittarius? But you recently really fully made a huge transformation out of it. And now you have transformed into the diamond. Ah, I love this for you. Okay, we're going to read this here. With everything that you've been through over the last, not even the last two years, because it's been a lifelong process for you, but the healing that you have accomplished over this the last two years 100 percent would absolutely make you into a diamond make you into one of the most valuable substances on the face of the earth diamond says if diamond has come to you today a powerful child has come to play it is time to unite the separate parts of your life and allow them to find a united strength it is time to unite your minds and listen to your heart. Only then can the will of your spirit guide, uh, I'm sorry, only then can the will of your spirit guide you in your physical world. The path of ascension is being presented to you. It is time to choose love. The first step is self. Other reasons diamond may be present include spiritual guidance activation at the crown chakra, the need to balance physical life and spirituality, or the opening of a pathway of service. So I intuitively feel like this message is not necessarily for anyone who is new to my channel 
or at least knew enough to not have known about that reading, the Sagittarius reading for August of 2019. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to that reading up in the top, top right of your screen, also in the description box and the pinned comment where the, where you find the timestamps and everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that that reading is available for you guys to see. Because as I'm reading through this and as I'm feeling through this energy, Sagittarius, I feel like this has everything to do with the process of healing that was kicked off with that reading in 2019, okay? So for the most part, I feel like the message, the real true message here is for an individual that is not that is new to my channel um, and that would really benefit from the process we've been going through in the last two years, starting with that reading. So go watch that reading, okay? For others of you that have been here with me since then or have been able to catch up in a sense, this is confirmation. Okay, this is confirmation for you that you have gone through the transformation or that you're actively going through the transformation. All right, cool. Okay, Sagittarius, I want to give this three shuffles for you. We're going to get some tarot to clarify. That was one for Sagittarius. Two for my Saggies. And this is three. Alrighty, so what clarity can we bring to Sagittarius in terms of in terms of diamond and light body? What clarification do you have for Sagittarius, please, Spirit, at this time? You're showing up in your own reading, Sag. But yes, 100%, absolutely, you do have the Empress at the bottom of the deck here. But 100%, absolutely, this is a time, this is a calling for you, Sagittarius, to balance your physical and your spiritual temperance, okay? With that, you have, ooh, you have the Four of Pentacles. All right, Sag. So also what I'm getting here now is um, there are some things that you need to let go of, okay? And there are things that need to be let go of in order for you to find this balance between spirit and physical, and what the Empress is saying at the bottom of the deck in connection or relation to this Four of Pentacles energy is that you don't have to be afraid to lose something. I'm feeling very specifically that whatever you need to lose or let go of, you stand to gain something of equal or better value, okay? There is, there, the spirit has been calling you, somebody here, spirit has been specifically calling you to either release something specific or to just let go in general, okay? And allow the universe to remove from your life that which no longer is of service to you. And also what I'm hearing specifically, specifically is that which no longer has meaning for you. The Empress is a reminder that the universe is unconditionally loving and un and, and, and um, infinitely abundant, okay? So you don't have to worry about whatever it is that needs to be released or let go of because it will be replaced for you in kind and in divine timing, all right? But you're definitely going through a realchemization process. And again, for those of you that have been following me for long enough, this message really just serves the purpose of reminding you to stay focused, stay centered, and stay open, okay? But for those of you that are new here to me, you are actively being asked to let go of something so that you may be heal, healed and something new can replace it. For some of you, you're being asked to let go of certain toxic individuals, toxic substances, or toxic situations because the universe would like to help you heal from that, you have the star at the bottom of the deck, would also like to bring you something better, something more in alignment with you, something of greater value to you, okay? Oh, that was a short but quick one. It was a good one though, Sag, and I'm gonna leave it right there, yeah? Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful for you. Again, I, and, and, and here's the thing. I think this is why this message is so short because spirit, my higher self and my guides were guiding me to, to, to tell you guys and to share that reading, okay, from uh, August of 2019 
So the reason why this message is so short is because there are other, there are further message or there is further guidance, more specific guidance for you in that reading. I would also recommend that you check out the Sagittarius playlist um, on my channel to get even more further guidance, okay? With that said, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful for you. I am sending you so much love and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs> hey there, Capricorn. Welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So let's get straight into this, Capricorn. What message do we have for Capricorn at this time, please, spirit? There it is, Cappy. Look at this. Look at this. What we got here? What do we got here? Okay. You have Dioptes. Interesting. Dioptes. The healing heart. All right, Cap. So here we go. Not going to sugarcoat it. But what this feels like here, Capricorn, is uh, a, a necessity to feel your emotions. Um, some of you are actively doing this. Some of you are actually diving into this right now. And I definitely feel like for some of you, the floodgates opened and you have you now have full and direct access to your emotions. And while that may have been scary to you in the very beginning or maybe before it actually happened, now it feels like, number one, it feels like a weight has absolutely been lifted off your shoulders, which makes perfect sense. But also there is an excitement to discovering or exploring this new realm that is your emotions, okay? Uh, for others of you, what you're needing to do is to tap into your heart center, okay? The healing heart. It's time for you to start focusing on the healing that could come through um, for you over, uh, uh, in terms of some of the blockages that you've been dealing with. Your heart has been blocked off for a very long time. And uh, spirit is asking you to do the work that's necessary to clear the way because because there are things that are being held back from you. And at this point, it's unnecessarily. It's unnecessary. Like the, some things are unnecessarily being held back from you. Some blessings, some healing is being unnecessarily held away from you because of it. I don't want to sound insensitive. I'm really not trying to sound insensitive, but it's a lack of facing your emotions. It's a lack of opening up your heart. Okay, let's, let's read the card from the book, yeah? On this day, the heart will be healed. Whenever Dioptes come, uh, goes, wherever Dioptes goes, broken hearts are healed and carried into understanding. The presence of this crystal for you indicates some of the many lessons of love are ready to be embraced. Compassion patience, non-judgment, listening, truthfulness, non-attachment, equality, and respect are all good starting points. Dioptes has come to hold the heart open. She indicates a new relationship or path of love. But remember, for new things to occur, one must be prepared to look forward, to take action and free attachments and expectations. Dioptes can also present when you have allowed others to cloud your judgment. So sit quietly, alone, and make your decisions. This crystal's presence tells you, you have the answers. The above-mentioned masters may be utilizing the frequency of Dioptes to communicate with you. Place this card to your heart and listen. And those ascended masters are... Um, let's, let, me, let me read this sentence from the last paragraph of what they're referring to. Important ancient Atlantean masters that were high priestesses and, and priests of the crystal Dioptes in the 11th city, Shambhala, or Shambhala, 
some Shambhala include Kuan Yin, Isis, Sananda or Jesus, Jesus, Akhenaten, Akhenaten, the Lady Tara, and Archangel Mary. They all still answer to this frequency. So if any of those individuals, those ascended masters, I'll say it again, Kuan Yin, Isis, Sananda, it's Jesus. Sananda is another word, another name for Jesus, but Sananda specifically. So you might want to connect with the with that with with that name and where that name originates from, okay? To to connect with that aspect of Jesus. But you also have Akhenaten, Akhenaten, Akhenaten. Uh, that's spelled A-K-H-E-N-A-T-E-N. -E -E I'll say that one more time. A-K-H-E-N-A-T-E-N. -E -E Akhenaten. The Lady Tara and Archangel Mary. Okay. So if any of those individuals ring a bell or send some sort of striking energy through your, through your heart... Focus on that. Connect with them. They may have a, a, a message for you or they may have some sort of healing that they can help you come to. Okay, Capricorn? But let's get into the tarot here and let's get a little bit more about this for you. Three shuffles. One. For my Capricorns, what's going on? What is What deeper clarification can we bring to Capricorn in terms of this heart healing? This is two. And this is three for my Capricorns. All right. So what clarity do we have for Capricorn here in terms of this situation, this message for Capricorn? What messages do we have? What clarification do we have for Capricorn at this time? What clarification do we have for Capricorn at this time? Just one card, it seems. Okay. Ah, the overall energy Capricorn is the Nine of Cups. And immediately this is speaking to a comfort zone. Uh, when I'm looking, when I when I look at the Nine of Cups here in this energy, what I see is someone, yep, okay, is someone that actually is very closed off. If you if you see, you notice that, uh, that person's stance, okay? They have their arms crossed in front of their in front of their heart. But I mean that's where you cross your arms, right? That's natural, but and sometimes this can be seen as a pretty smug pose. Sometimes this can be seen as, you know, just a, a pose of contentment, like, okay, we're good, we're done. Roll up our sleeve, our sleeves have been, we're all done, yeah, we're good, okay. Other times, this can be a defensive position, and that's what I feel. I feel like you're in a very defensive position, or at least you have been for a very long time. Um, and this has become a comfort zone. And you're needing to open up and allow your feelings to truly flow is what I'm hearing, Capricorn, because by you blocking your heart off like this, you're stifling your emotions, um, and that could actually be causing some pretty catastrophic situations for some of you because those emotions just get stifled and stifled and stifled, and they don't find expression, they don't find release, and so they fester, and then things get much worse later on down the road. But then look at this. Underneath the Nine of Cups, Capricorn, is the Five of Cups. Okay, so someone is sad. And what I'm feeling here, Capricorn, is someone has been sad for a very long time. For a very, very long time. And what Spirit is saying, what the universe is saying here, Capricorn, is that it's time for you to release yourself of this. It's time for you to face this. Seven of Pentacles, Seven of Cups. It's time for you to face this, Capricorn. And weed through the emotions. Feel through whatever it is you feel. But feel it with intentions to understand it, acknowledge it, and release it. Okay? You have one more card here, Capricorn. Uh, it's the one and only card that came out in your shuffle, and it's fallen face down. Ooh. It's the Four of Pentacles in reverse, Capricorn. It's time to release. It's time to release. It's time to let this go. The Four of Pentacles represents holding on to something. The Four of Pentacles can be a hoarding energy. The Four of Pentacles in reverse 
can a, a reversal can mean uh, many different things. It depends on the circumstances. But for you here, Capricorn, the Four of Pentacles can in, in reverse can represent a desire, a, a, a dire, a dire need to release something. This actually could be an extreme blockage for you. Okay, the reversal of this can can mean having been re released, or the reversal of this can mean there is a blockage due to a lack of letting go. This is a very simple and straightforward message, Sagittarius. But the message here is it's time to start diving into your heart. And maybe, Sag, not Sag, I'm sorry. Did I call you? I could just called you Sagittarius, didn't I? Capricorn. Um, maybe watch the Sagittarius, Sagittarius situation, but like, whatever. It could be Capricorn that you have been in this process. You've been going through this process all along. And now it's time for you or you're now you're ready to approach the heart chakra, to approach the heart, to approach the emotions, to approach how it is you truly feel. So I am hearing for some of you, you're actually desiring that. But the message here for you, Capricorn, is that it's time to release. It's time to let go. It's, it's time to start acknowledging how it is you truly feel about something. Something, someone, this circumstance. I also heard this circumstance is toxic. And really, uh, uh, Capricorn, what I just heard was simply acknowledge it. That's all you need to do right now. Because the other one of the other messages that I was getting, Capricorn, is that all you need to do is just allow yourself to feel it right now and let the universe facilitate the rest. Capricorn, you don't need to have a plan of action in how to deal with this. Okay? And that actually may be what has been holding you back. You can't quite figure out how to deal with any, with any of this. You have no experience in this. This is not your realm of expertise. It's not even a realm that you are familiar with in some cases. So you have been consistently avoiding it because you don't know how to handle it. But Capricorn, what you need to know is that you don't have to have that plan. All you have to do is follow through with the steps. The universe, your higher self, God's source creator, the angels, archangels, ascended masters, way showers, guides, your ancestors. They will all lead you down the path. The only thing you are responsible for is opening up and learning from what it is you have swirling around you and eventually allowing yourself to let go. That's all you have to focus on, Capricorn. Allow the universe to facilitate the rest for you. Allow the universe to put the plan in action. What's, what, it, what You guys know this phrase. You've heard this before. What's a really great way to make God laugh? Make a plan. Why? Because God already planned it out for you. God's got the steps. It's just I literally just heard God has the steps. He's just waiting for you to align with them and then take them. All right, Capricorn, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I truly hope this was helpful for you. I am sending you so much love. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So let's get into this, yeah? All right, spirit. What messages do we have for Aquarius at this time? What healing message do you have for Aquarius at this time? Ooh. All right, Aquarius, you got one of my, you got one of the other, one of my favorite cards. One of my, well, one of my favorite crystals, stones. You got black onyx. Grounded self-awareness. This is absolutely one of my favorite stones. Um, number one, I'm just I'm just I'm a big fan of the color black. I really love 
the potential, the creative potential within it. But I really love the uh, protective energies that it provides to you. Um, and it's one of my favorite crystals or one of my favorite stones for connecting with myself and remaining grounded and becoming self-aware. So Aquarius, I feel like right now you are in the process, or at least I will say, it feels like you're ready to start getting a deeper understanding of who it is you truly are or what it is you truly want out of life or this experience. I feel like I, I get this energy, Aquarius, of you having been what I want to say, a kind of like a party goer. Now, I'm not I'm not trying to say you were a club kid or a, a bar fly or maybe you were. I don't know. Um, but I don't, I don't mean this in like an unhealthy sense. I get this feeling. I just get this feeling that like I, I'm seeing an image of someone that's like a social butterfly and was just flitting around and, you know, being social and having a lot of fun and getting to know a lot of people, meeting new people, trying new things, having all kinds of wonderful, sometimes scary, sometimes mind-blowingly awesome experiences. But now you're reaching a level of your life or you're reaching a point in your life, Aquarius, where it's time for you to really get grounded in yourself. Because it feels like this energy is of someone that was defining themselves through their experiences and through the people that they meet and the experiences that they had with those people. But though that definition of you, Aquarius, is not necessarily who you truly are. It's a big hodgepodge of definitions from different places. It's almost as if someone traveled all through the 50s. Like I'm getting like, like this might be, maybe this is um, literally what has been going on for you. Or maybe this is just an analogy. But the analogy I'm getting is that like say somebody went on a trip of all 50 states, right? And in each state, they picked up a souvenir. And each one of those souvenirs was used as or became a definition of this person who went around and had all these experiences and acquired these things. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's who that person truly is. So it feels like at this point, Aquarius, you've gotten to the point where you've had your fun, I want to say, or at least you've had enough fun under the mindset, the mind frame that you were in before. And now it's time for you to really start learning about you, who you truly are underneath the conditioning, underneath the clothes, underneath the wrapping, right? Black Onyx, Grounded Self-Awareness. Let's read from the book here. Oh, that's close. Very close. Look at that. Okay, cool. Black Onyx. Something in the physical world is creating stress and strain. You may have become involved in something that is not your responsibility. You need to have a good look at yourself, your needs, and your physical surrounds. This is a time for strong decisions and action concerning your physical well-being and happiness. Decisions of the nature you must make are often best made in solitude outside of the influence of others. Black Onyx also presents where there is a need for grieving. You know, Aquarius, I really don't feel like this is a bad energy for you. In many ways, and maybe you'll cringe when you hear me say this, and I don't mean this in a bad way because I am one of those people that refuses to ever fully grow up. Okay? <laughs> but it feels like you are coming to a sense of maturity. In some ways, in some cases, Aquarius, you're growing up. And it's beautiful. And I really honestly, I mean, like, yes, there could be some stressful things in your life. You could be wrapped up in situations that really you have no business being a part of to begin with. And I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. It's just like that really has nothing to do with you. So like you really don't even have to deal with that. Like, you know what I mean? And that feels like residual stuff you picked up on your adventures that you didn't necessarily want. You weren't necessarily trying to pick up, but, you know, it, it happened. You know, It happens, right? 
But now it's just time for you to release yourself from that. For some of you, I'm going to give the, the tarot here three shuffles for you. But for some of you, Aquarius, it is kind of a dire situation. You have come, there are, for some of you, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe the stress is too high. This has nothing to do with me. Why am I even here? Oh my God, I got to get out of this. I got to clean up my ways. I got to change my shit. I got to grow up. Okay. <laughs> but again, it's not a bad thing, Aquarius. All right. It's not a bad thing at all. This is two. Your adventures... They were necessary. This is three. What I'm hearing for some of you is that they were a necessary part of your healing process. And just by the sheer fact that it's something that you wanted to do, it spoke to your soul when you chose to go on these adventures, is enough to say that was a part of your journey, a necessary part of your journey. And if you've got anybody coming at you trying to be like, I told you so, listen, just tune them out because... It ain't even like that. Okay, Aquarius. <laughs> All right. What other messages do we have for Aquarius at this time in terms of Black Onyx and grounding their self-awareness? What other messages do we have for Aquarius? Please, Spirit. Well, shit, Aquarius. You showed up. You showed up, Aquarius. King of Swords. And that represents Aquarius energy. I mean, it could technically it could represent any air sign, okay? But officially, the kings represent the fixed of the element of which they reside or they find themselves. The, 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 the fixed sign within the air signs is Aquarius. So this is you. But outside of that, the king of swords represents you... What I want to say is coming down to earth, getting down to business, being objective, and calling a spade a spade. And doing what it is you will with that. However, that whatever that means for you, whatever that whatever action needs to be taken, wherever you need to place that in your life, where it fits, then do that. But the King of Swords is representing the energy of you being objective and literally calling a spade a spade. Okay? where in the past you may have called a spade uh, a diamond. You know what I mean? And then at the bottom of the deck, wow, at the bottom of the deck is the Hermit and the Three of Pentacles and the Six of Swords. This definitely feels like the type of energy where, um, you know, your party days are over. And man, did you have some really great experiences there? Like, no one's trying to shame you for that. And it, again, if you have people that are, if you really are going through this phase of like, okay, party days are over. And you have people that are kind of like trying to get on your case about that or what in whatever way, Aquarius, just tune them out. Okay? Because I definitely do not feel like, nor would I advise you to, lose. I don't feel like you're losing any of that sense of playfulness or inner child that had you in that party phase for whatever length of time it had you in. It just feels like you're putting it into the appropriate place in your life. The three of pentacles represents self-mastery and the six of swords represents moving forward. And it feels like that, it feels like wherever it is you are moving away from, it just got too burdensome. Eventually, it, it, there came a time where it was just too heavy, too low in vibration. And again, Aquarius, all that means is that you have successfully risen your vibration. And now you're ready to move on to higher and lighter things. Ah, this is wonderful for you, Aquarius. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. I really, truly hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so freaking much. I'm sending you so much love. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next message or our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> Hey there, Pisces. Welcome to your liquid crystal healing message. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So let's get straight into this, Pisces. Yes. What messages do we have for Pisces at this time? What? Oh, there it is. Aha. Okay. Okay, cool. 
Uh, you do have two cards here. I'm really only going to read one of them. But this feels like it's a double, it's a, it's the, the, the messages are connected. But when the cards come out like this, I mean, I, for these readings, Pisces, I'm just looking for one card at this time. So what happens when these cards come out multiple, I take the card on top of the stack as the intended message that you are meant to hear. And then I take the other cards, the subsequent cards, cards below that as, di uh, as a deeper part to that message. So what you have on top is Selenite, Spiritual Guidance. And then the, there's one more card that came with that. It's one, uh, These are two of my favorite stones and crystals, by the way. But you have Fluorite, which talks about mental mastery. Okay? So, um, but I'm just going to take Selenite for right now. Uh, because what it feels like is being said here for you, Sag Sagittarius, what? No, Pisces. But maybe watch Sag's message. Um what this is feeling like here for you, Pisces, is that you are starting to reach a level of spiritual advancement in which spiritual guidance is going to be coming to you much easier than it has before, we'll say. But in order for you to really be able to be open to that, you have to go through a level of mental mastery, okay? And that's why fluorite came out with you or with it for you. Now, in the readings that I've been doing for Pisces over the last few weeks, um, there are there have been messages that have been coming out for Pisces um, that are surrounding releasing yourself from some sort of addiction. Okay, and what I feel like is happening for you, at least in this moment, Pisces, is that you are in fact releasing a lot of addictions that have kept you from being spiritually guided or that have kept you from tapping into this spiritual or higher awareness, okay? Um, but so that's great. Now, what I want to say in terms of that is if you would like to get more, if that, if that piques your fancy and you don't know what I'm referring to as in the messages um, that we're talking about addiction, look, go look on my channel. Um, and maybe, uh, well, there were multiple of them. Go look on my channel between September 1st and I want to say between like September 1st and maybe September 9th. Um, there were a number of live streams that I did in which I pulled cards, messages for like all of the signs and go through and watch the Pisces messages because I feel like those are, are connected to this, okay? And what this is, and this is almost feeling like putting a cap on it. Because I do feel like, Pisces, you're going through a pretty big transformation. And this transformation is releasing you from, okay, sorry, I'm trying to find the cards. This, that, this ah, there we go. Um, this transformation is, allowing you to release some of the low vibrational stuff or the pain or the trauma that had you trying to self-medicate or that had provided you with the attachment to some sort of addictions that were helping you cope, all right? But now you're, you're starting to, I really feel like Pisces, you're really starting to rise above everything, okay? And now you're getting to the point where you really gotta work on your mental mastery so that you can continue to, to receive, so that you can continue to receive the spiritual guidance that's coming through to you now, okay? With all of that said, let's read from the book. If Selenite has come to you today, there are beings with information that is ready and available for you on the inner plane. This information and guidance is relevant to current circumstances and situations, as well as your spiritual growth, and very often your purpose on earth. It is worth noting that selenite only comes when the ability to receive the information from spirit has already been mastered. Well, 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 Sa uh, Sagittarius again. You might have a Sagittarius placement if this is if this reading is resonating for you, or you might just want to watch the Sagittarius reading. Pisces, it seems that you've already mastered this somehow. But what I'm getting is that if you have been dealing with addictions lately and you've been trying to cope, but now you're in a phase or in a time in your life where you're really starting to release those addictions, 
well, it feels like those addictions were a coping mechanism because you've been receiving this spiritual guidance all along and you've been rejected by it. Your messages have been rejected. You have been ostracized. You've been pushed away, this, that, and the third, whatever. But it definitely feels like for somebody here or for some of you, the addictions that you are dealing with, that you are working on releasing right now are directly related to you trying to drown out your spiritual connection. That is, that is a very common reason for developing substance addiction and substance abuse, okay? Excellent. One of the best ways to get this information is to do a little automatic writing. Sit quietly with a pen in your hand, keep an open mind, and listen. Write down whatever comes. It is best to not read what you are writing and to read it later. Offer, often yawning can help loosen the throat chakra and facilitate the entire process. Alternatively, set up a meeting time with spirit on the astral plane to collect the information in the dream state. Jade and apophyllite can help you with this. Selenite is a sacred stone to the Pleiadian star system. They may be contacting you. Selenite is also powerfully connected to cats. If you have one around you, it's a message. Their principal wisdoms are in the flame of love and heard through the heart. Sit, listen, and feel. Excellent. Excellent, Pisces. So now what I want to do is I want to get some clarification. Yeah, some closing messages here for you. I'm going to give this three shuffles for you, Pisces. This is one. This is two. For you, Pisces. And this is three. All right, Pisces. So, Selenite. Oh, well, would you look at that, Pisces? The Queen of Cups. I am hearing that this does represent you. Officially, your energy would be represented by the Page of Cups or the Knight of Cups. But you're showing up as the Queen of Cups here. This is your empathic, intuitive ability. And what I'm feeling with the Queen of Cups is that you are finally accepting it, taking it seriously, taking it into account, working it into the wellness regimen that you set for yourself to maintain your sense of wholeness and balance. I like that. What other messages do we have for Pisces in terms of Selenite's healing? abilities, healing, presence in Pisces life. Excellent, Pisces. Look, Three of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck now. That does represent self-mastery. You have two cards that have come out here face up. One is face down. The first card that came out is the Five of Swords in reverse. I like this. I especially like this when it's coupled with the next card. The Ten of Swords. So there was a level of self-sabotage that you are now releasing that is done. And you are working on yourself to build up your sense of spiritual and psychic receptivity. Some of you might, may actually be doing this with intentions of being a psychic, a healer, a channeler for individuals. Okay, some of you are in fact natural healers. And that's why you were born with these gifts that everybody has, but quite frankly, some, many of us, but society and, and all kinds of circumstances have caused us to disconnect from that. But many of us, like myself included, we are born with those gifts and abilities wide open and available for use. And thus we come here to use those abilities to help others. But we often, and yes, I mean me, we, I mean we, we as individuals like us often turn to substance abuse to cope for whatever reason, whether we're rejected by it or whether it's just too much for us to handle at once on all, all on our own, okay? But the five of swords in reverse with the 10 of swords and the three of pentacles at the bottom of the deck is all talking about you putting that to a rest, putting, putting an end to that, okay? So that you can be open to what's coming through for you the messages that you are hearing, the messages you are meant to receive. 
One last card here. It's the world in reverse. But that's not a bad thing, Pisces. Because again, you have the three of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So that means that there is a level of rebuilding and self-mastery that is coming online here. So what I'm getting with the world in reverse for you, Pisces, is that you are moving towards the completion of this so that you can be more open. The Ten of Swords is upright. So that's saying to me that you are still trying to wrap up some loose ends. You're still trying to focus on working, doing your work that you need to do, going through the steps that you need to go through to release some sort of addiction or to release some sort of painful circumstance. But I like that the Ten of Swords is upright because to me, it means you're actively working through this. You're actively moving towards the completion. And soon enough, it will be fully complete. And you'll really be ready <clears throat> to take the leap of faith in the next direction. Now, also what I'm getting here, Pisces, is that it could be that, you know, this the world in reverse is representing the end of this Five of Swords energy. You've sufficiently moved past it. And now the Ten of Swords, Three of Pentacles is coupling up to represent you rebuilding yourself from the aftermath, out of the aftermath. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm gonna leave it there for you, Pisces. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I am sending you all so much love and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>